welcome everyone to our regular planning meeting for the month of May. We have with us uh, Councillor Link from Ward 1, Councillor Vercetti from Ward 2, Councillor Pereg from Ward 4, our CAO, Brent Alnick, and our Red River Planner, Mr. Eno. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I will read our resolution to open up the meeting and get started. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bassetti. Any discussion? Councillor Link? First, I'm going to be voting to adopt the agendas as they appear on the RM website for the public and on all net for Council. This does not mean I approve, and this is my opinion, I do not approve of any additions to agenda items following the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Mr. CAO. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Link, of course, you use the word of course. Before every council meeting, you raise the issues of agendas being altered after the fact. I have three questions for you. Can you explain why this is a concern for you? Mr. CAO, I don't know if I need to answer your question. Yeah, I have another question. You make this statement, of course, but have never once requested to meet with the MLO or CAO to discuss your concerns. Can you explain why you wouldn't want to uh, resolve your issue? The mayor offered to meet tonight. I'm not asking to meet with the uh, for you to meet with the mayor. You've been been doing this repetitively, meeting after meeting after meeting. There's other yeah. things that are repetitive uh, that we have, and 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 we have a, an, a a municipal legislative officer. We have myself, the CAO. You've never once. I, I want to be clear on this. You have never once reached out to us uh, uh, to give us reasons for your concerns so uh, hopefully before the end of four years uh, you'll reach out so you don't have to start your of course statement at the start of every meeting well things do get added to the agenda after the meetings are finished and i think that's wrong that's not where people look for information that has happened at meetings you look in the minutes the agenda tells you what the meeting will be about. The minutes tell you what the meeting was about. There are ways to add information to minutes. Thank you. Well, Councillor Link, uh, I'm not sure if you're accurate there, but we'll accept uh, what you said. The welcome mat is out anytime you want to discuss with, with our legislative officer and myself why you're misleading uh, our viewers and our residents at the beginning of every meeting. I have another question for you, of course. The agenda, that's why. Could you please clarify? Point of order, could we continue on with the meeting? I think we can discuss this another time. We have a five hour meeting as as uh, we were told. Let's let's continue on with uh, Well, Madam Mayor, we discuss I've, this another uh, time. before every meeting, it's, it's, it's laid out by Councillor Link that there's something happening that may be suspicious or a smoking gun or is done wrong uh, uh, at council, supposedly by administration, over and over and over. And we need to get down to the bottom of this because it's not proper. Uh, the RM has a reputation and a brand. We're the 10th fastest growing uh, community in, in Canada. We have some big retail developers that want to come to West St. Paul and I'm getting calls and saying, what, are, what is being talked about? What, what's that statement at the start of every meeting? We're concerned about that. I'm talking about the biggest retailers in, in Canada, and now they're starting to get concerned about uh, what's going on at our council and, 
and, and what do these statements mean? And, and we got to get to the bottom of this. So I'm opening the door here to, to Councillor Link. Uh, I don't want to lose anything for this RM because of statements made at the start of the meetings. And uh, so, so I'm opening, I'm giving a welcome mat here to come and discuss this uh, with the senior administrator. Well, uh, tell I'd like to know, you to Councillor Link, please clarify why she feels she needs to I've make the statement at the beginning of every council meeting. Point of order again, could we please continue with the meeting and this can be dealt with. We did this last special meeting did the same thing, we stopped for 10 minutes, which is not in the minutes, by the way, and there was some investigation, and then all of a sudden we wanted motions. Let's deal with this behind closed doors. If you wanna offer a meeting, great, but let's continue on with the meeting now, please. But I'm there. I've, I've asked uh, a counselor Link to explain herself. Councillor Clybers decided this is, uh, an issue that she needs to address now. Uh, it's it's the RM brand and reputation, and it's my reputation, and and I don't want to be pressured into uh, uh, to let's start this meeting. I'm I'm looking for some answers. I want to uh, uh, to get this thing resolved. Uh, now now Councillor Link doesn't want to to answer, and yet I have to hear this at the start of every meeting. I'm, I've got uh, uh, concerns. Uh, and I'm willing to move on here because uh, I'm not getting uh, uh, quality answers for this statement that's made at at every meeting and and hope hopefully Councillor Link can self reflect on why she's doing this and why why she's trying to uh, bring the attention to the community about something that's not happening. So I'm willing to move on. Like I say, uh, I don't need to meet behind closed doors with anyone. I've got a welcome mat at my office and Councillor Link's more than welcome to come in anytime uh, to discuss your matters. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. CAO uh, and Councillor Link. I'm concerned about this as it comes up at every meeting that there's indication that there's tampering going on with agendas and now comments made that uh, the minutes aren't done correctly, which would be illegal under our municipal act. Um, so I'm concerned about that. I'll give council a heads up that I will be calling a special meeting on this next week uh, and we will be discussing it. Um, and so that, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that Councillor Link continues to raise this issue but has made no attempt to resolve it. And I will take that first step. We will call a meeting where we will bring everybody in and we will try and address the concerns that are raised that are quite serious. So, so a heads up on that. I have a mover and a seconder. I will call for the question. All those in favor of adopting the agenda. And that is carried, thank you. All right, no addendums to the agenda. We're not adding anything to this agenda. Uh, our opening remarks for this evening. The RM of West St. Paul strives to be a safe and inclusive community that residents are proud to call home where diversity is embraced, the environment is cared for and leadership is valued and trusted. The West St. Paul Council is committed to working as a team to provide good governance, safe and reliable infrastructure, recreational facilities and outdoor spaces that the community can enjoy in a sustainable way that values the environment and is financially prudent. Before we open up our first public hearing and we have one, two, three, four, five for this evening, uh, I will read our uh, opening statements for residents uh, to be aware of our public hearing process. We are aware that most people who attend council meetings for planning matters like the ones here tonight are not completely familiar with how the planning process works. I wanna spend a few minutes providing some additional context so that we all have a better understanding of the process, the requirements around the Manitoba Planning Act and our local bylaws. Any person can apply for a variance, conditional use, rezoning or subdivision as per the Manitoba Planning Act. By making the application with West St. Paul's Planning Authority, the Red River Planning District, this does not mean that council has endorsed the planning item. When an application is submitted, council is required to hear from the applicant and from those representatives who attend the public hearing to speak in favor, in opposition, or for more information. It is important to note that council is being presented with all the information at the same time as those in attendance here today. 
There are procedures council members must follow once an application is officially filed with the Red River Planning District and until such time as a decision is made. Council members cannot speak with the applicant or any other person who may be seeking information or wants to speak in support or opposition of an open application. This guards against anyone influencing council members before the public hearing and ensures that each member of council makes their decision based on the same information heard or presented by way of correspondence here tonight. Often residents are frustrated by not being able to speak to their elected officials once an application has been filed, but this is done for the reasons discussed. The Red River Planning District staff can, however, answer questions from the public at any time. The Red River Planning District accepts applications from residents and developers who want to build houses, sheds, swimming pools, garages, decks, and from those who want to subdivide their lands from one lot splits to larger developments. Red River Planning District staff are professional planners recognized by a professional association and are tasked with researching every application. Their work and recommendations to council are made based on a legal framework and not, a personal, not their personal opinions. They review each application against the Manitoba Planning Act, our development plan, our zoning bylaw. They also circulate the application to many other organizations that may be impacted, such as Manitoba Infrastructure, the Public School Finance Board, Sustainable Development, Gas, Hydro, adjacent municipalities, such as the City of Winnipeg, East St. Paul, and Rockwood, to name a few. Our RPD staff does this to determine if the application meets all the legal requirements. At the public hearing, Council hears from many delegations and we will ultimately decide if the application is a good fit for the community and if it will be approved. We consider both the legal requirements the planner has researched as well as the feedback from our community. Right. And with that, I will read the resolution to open up our first public hearing. Be it resolved that this meeting of Council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to Section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favour? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Eno, I will turn it over to you to present your report to Council. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, all of Council. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, the administration can allow me to share, please. There we go. Thank you. So this is variance application number 39 of uh, 2022, and it's located at, for a property located at uh, 638 Grasmere Road. And the purpose of this application is to reduce the site area requirement from two acres to 0.9 acres. And this is related to a subdivision that has been approved. I should actually note the next uh, uh, item on your agenda is very similar to this one. So here's the subject property outlined uh, with the black to hash mark. And the, uh, the property has been now uh, split in half uh, through the subdivision. So there's now just the north parcel is what we're dealing about, north of uh, Grasmere. And uh, as I said, this is proposed to be at 0.9 acres instead of the two acre site uh, requirement under the uh, rural residential zone. And here's just the survey plan showing you that the, uh, the portion that, that we're talking about. As I noted, Madam Mayor, uh, this is related to a subdivision application. That number is uh, S212935, which was approved by council, as well as given conditional approval by the River River Pine District Board last month. And this is a condition of approval that they obtained the variances for the, the undersized uh, residuals here. Uh, should council wish to approve this, there's just the one standard uh, uh, condition that we always have, and that's that the variance is limited to what's proposed and any changes would require a new variance. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Eno. I will go around our virtual council table here. Councillor Pregg, any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions, thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Eno? I have no questions, thank you, Mr. Eno. Councillor Bassetti, any questions? No questions, thank you. 
Councillor, Councillor Link, Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yeah, one, one question, Mr. Eno. Could lots A and, or pardon me, could parcels A and B be referred to as a lot? Yes, in fact, that's what's happening here. Yes, okay, thank you. That was all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. And no questions from me, thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone registered to, or do we have the applicant? I apologize. Do we have the applicant on, available online? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Donna Thordarson uh, here with us this evening, as well as Bill McGarry, both registered in support. Ms. Thordarson, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> Um, great to see everybody. Sorry, it's not in person, but it's always lovely to see everyone uh, in over a Zoom call. Um, I really don't have anything much to say other than uh, we do concur with the planner's report. This is a fulfillment of one of the conditions on the application that was done back in March 10th of 22. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Thordenson? Seeing none, thank you. You'll have an opportunity to speak again. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone registered in support? Anyone else wanting to speak? No, Madam Mayor, no one else registered in support in opposition of for information. And I will turn it back to you, Ms. Thordenson. Anything else you're wanting to add then before we uh, close the public hearing? No, nothing. I just wish everybody a sunny afternoon on a patio somewhere soon. Thank you. Nothing further then, I will read the resolution to close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried, thank you. I will pull up the resolution. Where is an application for variance order 3922 for the property located at 638 Grassmere Road to reduce the minimum required site area in an RRO rural residential overlay zone from required two acres minimum to 0.9 plus or minus acres minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approve variation order 3922 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to what is proposed within this application and any changes will require new variance approval. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period no longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Item 5.2. Be it resolved that the meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Mr. Eno, I will turn it back over to you for your report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this application, uh, variance number 40 of 2022, is located at 630 Grassmere. It's uh, related to the last one, as well as related to that subdivision that we already talked about. This is the second half of that uh, subdivision that, uh, that also needs a variance. Uh, in this case, you can see the, the neighboring property here, and the north portion, north of the Grassmere drain, is, has been subdivided off. And they need a variance from the two acres uh, requirement 
down to 1.02 acres in size. Um, that's all I have on this. The condition on this one is exactly the same as the last one. That's if they make any changes, it's got to come back to council. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Any questions for Mr. Eno on this application? I see him shaking hands. Go ahead, Councillor Link. Um, could you put up the diagram one more time? I think you referred to parcels D and G only. Uh, of course. I believe it's D, E, and G. Yeah. Um, oh, there we got that on the front page. You can see, see there. And okay. then I'll go to the... Uh, uh, no, back up one, please. Oh. Parcels, oh, D. Oh, D, 2, G. Oh, okay. I apologize. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. If there are no further questions for Mr. Eno, then Ms. Elias, have we got uh, applicants wanting to speak on this application? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have Donna Thordarson and Bill McGarry uh, with us this evening, both registered in support. Good evening, Welcome back, Ms. Thordarson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening again. Yes, this is um, follows the same as the previous. Um, we do concur with the planner's report that it is a fulfillment of one of the conditions on the application. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Thorderson? All right, seeing no questions for you. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone registered in support, opposition or for information wanting to speak to the application? No one else registered in support, opposition or for information. Thank you. Anything you're wanting to add Ms. Thorderson before we close the public hearing? No, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. All right, and we'll read the resolution to close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded. Councillor Bussetti, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Apologize, we'll pull up this resolution. Whereas an application for variance order 4022 was received for the property located at 630 Grassmere Road to reduce the minimum site area in an RRO, rural residential overlay zone, from required two acres minimum to 1.2 acres plus or minus minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it hereby resolved that the that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul do hereby approve the variation order 4022 with the following conditions. One, the variance is limited to what is proposed within this application and any changes will require a new variance approval. The variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board, council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Link. Any further discussion on the application? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Right, we are on item 5.3 for those following along at home. Be it resolved that the meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brissetti. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Mr. Eno, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mayor. So this is variance number 44, as you noted, it's for property located at 55 uh, Tivoli Lane. And the application is to increase the permitted number of parking spaces or vehicles per se, in a rural residential zone from four up to 16. Uh, here's the uh, subject property outlined with the, uh, the yellow uh, box around there. And you can see it's within the existing uh, subdivision where we have some new homes that are built. 
And as I noted, this is to uh, vary the maximum permitted number of parking spaces from four to 16. And here is a site plan that the applicant has given showing the, uh, the house, the detached garage, and then some, uh, some parking spaces there where the vehicles are, are located. Uh, this came to our office uh, through a, uh, I guess we can say a bylaw enforcement complaint. I'm not sure if it went all the way to uh, full on bylaw enforcement, but there was a complaint and our bylaw officers uh, talked to the applicants and then they came in to make a variance application to see if they couldn't rectify the situation uh, that way. Uh, they have noted that there are, I believe, uh, 15 people uh, living on the property, nine of which who have uh, driver's licenses, and there are a number of, uh, of vehicles here. Um, should council wish to approve this, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, conditions that we would recommend. They're pretty standard conditions. The first one is that the variance is limited to what's proposed and any changes would require new variances. So going beyond what they propose would have to come back to council as well as that they obtain all required uh, permits and approvals from our office and your office uh, if required. Uh, that's about all I have on this. The only other thing I can add is uh, this is a bit of a unique uh, uh, parking variance. I'm not sure I've ever seen one like this. Typically the variances that we get are to reduce the number of parking spaces and that's usually for a, uh, a commercial building and every once in a while for like a multifamily. Uh, so this is a bit of a unique one and uh, I'd welcome any questions that you have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Eno. Councillor Bassetti, I'll start with you. I know this is in your ward. Any questions for uh, Mr. Eno on this application? Not for Mr. Eno, I'm gonna leave it for the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Perreg, any questions for Mr. Eno? No, I'll leave it for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Reno. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Sure. Mr. Eno, would you concur that if this variance is approved, it will set a precedent for all rural residential lot owners to ask and receive a zoning, a similar zoning variance? To me, it Sets a it would set a precedent. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would use those terms, uh, precedent, just because the decision of one council uh, doesn't hold a future council to uh, to that decision. So I'm, I'm hesitant to use that, but uh, I, I think I would agree that uh, it could open the door for for others to come forward and uh, and make applications. Thank you. That's the only question I have for you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Councillor Cliver, any questions for Mr. Eno? Thank you, Mr. Eno. Um, question I have is, is this supposed to be a single family residence? Yes, ma'am, it is. It's a for a house, that's it. Okay, and what is the definition of a single family residence? I, it's, it's a one dwelling unit that's uh, the form of a house. Um, I can... Uh, Hey, bear with me. I'll just grab the actual definition for you of a dwelling. So your zoning bylaw says that a dwelling is a building or portion thereof designed for residential occupancy, but shall not include a travel trailer, a motor home, or a mobile home is defined herein. And it notes single family is a detached building designed for and used by one family. One family, okay. And I guess my other question is, have there been any complaints about this property at Red River Planning for bylaw enforcement? Uh, as I noted, I believe this came to our attention because there was a, uh, an informal complaint and our bylaw enforcement officers then usually follow up with the property owner. I'm not sure it actually got to the point of, uh, of a full on bylaw enforcement process. I believe the applicants came in immediately afterwards to make this application, see if they couldn't rectify it uh, through a variance, so. Okay, well the vehicles that I'm seeing um, look like vans. Uh, was there any complaints about a business being run here? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Those are all thank my you, questions for now. 
No questions for me. Thanks for the detailed report. It's excellent. Ms. Elias, do we have uh, the applicant with us on the line? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have Gersharon Guerrero with us this evening. Mr. Gruel, are you able to hear us okay if I'm saying your last name correctly? If not, I apologize. It's actually, she's my daughter and my name is Gurshan Karewal and my daughter will be speak with you guys because uh, in uh, some communication barrier, I can't speak properly. So my daughter will be speak with you. My name is Gurshan Karewal and my daughter's name is Prabhnur Kaur Garewal. Sure, welcome. Okay, so our variance states that we require 16 vehicles to be parked in our residence. And that's, that's mostly because we have 16 people living in this house, nine of which are licensed, as you guys already know. And because of that, we also have our own family run business, which requires a lot of vans, hence our business being a plumbing business. So I can be correct that one, because uh, we are uh, three, three brothers own this property. We all like the three brothers lives in this house. And uh, when we start building this house, we have uh, six bedrooms in the house. And RRP is asking me why you need this so many bedrooms in the house. And at that time, I give him a letter of intent, how many people are lives in the house. And after that, they issue me a permit for building the house. And we have a big house with a eight bedroom. So on, we also live like as 16 people in the house. So that's why everyone needs a vehicle need to drive. Thank you Thank both. You. I'm going to go around our council table here and see if there are questions for you on your application. I'm going to start with Councillor Busetti. Any questions for the applicants? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming out tonight uh, to try and clear this up. I, you probably heard some from your neighbors in the area. Uh, first of all, about your business. Uh, so what is the address of your business? It's a... Uh, address? Yeah, the address of the... the 101 the Plymouth Street. That is my warehouse, my shop. 101 Plymouth Street. We lease the shop, 5,000 square feet to shop. Okay. Because you're aware that... Uh, I'm not sure how m I think it was five vehicles or something like that that I, we would seen. And I'd seen when I was out having concerns, another resident had concerns about something else in the area. And yeah. it, it, it's not a lot, like running a business in the residential area is not allowed. It might've been your letter of intent, but I don't think that's what the planning is looking at when they issue a permit. They're at checking if, you know, the build, the making sure everything st falls in standards for the building of a residential home, because you are in a residential area. Okay. Mm -hmm. just can I clarify this? Yes. Uh, actually, we are three brothers and we have one nephew. And unfortunately, we all are plumber. So, so we need to drive our vans when we need to go to work or something from home. So we bring our van to the home. Then from home, we go to a work with a van. That's the scenario. We all all live in the same house. So do you have not any business? Oh, sorry. Do you have employees that come to your house and pick up no. the vehicles or, or no. drop vehicles off and go to jobs? No, actually, I think uh, Pam from the West End Wall, she sent me some picture because when we are building the house, we are a handyman. That time, so many workers are coming to my house and tradesmen, they guys helping us to be build the house. I did a most of work in the house by ourselves. And I think my house construction is still not finished. We need to lot of done in my house. Usually we done everything by our hand because we are a handyman. So that's why our people are thinking, my neighbors are thinking that other people are coming in the house or something, but not. They are working in my house for construction. They are not uh, pick up the vehicles from my house or driving somewhere else, it's not like that. I understand you have nine, nine drivers in the house. Yeah. With, with 16 vehicles, I could see if you, Myself personally, I could see you coming to ask us for more space if there was no business running out of there. To me, it, how many you have living in your house, that has nothing to do with me. That's, you know, the way you want to do it. And that's how it's done. 
But it's the problem that I'm seeing is there's multiple vehicles for your business being run in and out of there, coming and going at different times. And, and I'm hearing about it. So that, that, that's why I have to bring this up. I'm going to be quite honest. Like I've heard about it. I've had quite a few complaints. And that's where I have a problem with it, just to be right out point blank with you. I because I I see that one because these are my our own own vehicles we all, we are drive those vehicles not somebody else because we can be uh, go in the morning come back in the evening just bring those my work vans. But you do have a warehouse where vehicle the, the work vehicles could get left and you go you're going back and forth. I can see if you have one where you're on call of an emergency or the but. You know, there's already excessive amounts of vehicles in the driveway, plus adding all the work vehicles. It really makes for a tough situation for us. Yeah, I can be I can be park my work vans in my shop, but I then need to buy a more vehicles. Need to be come 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 go to the shop to pick my vehicles. Then it should be my more vehicles I need to buy out. Thank you. That that's all the comments I'm going to make right now. Thank you, Mr. Gruel. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Grewal? Yes, Mr. Grewal. You said um, you want a permit for 16 vehicles, but you only have nine drivers. Does that yeah. make any sense? No, actually, because uh, we have a nine personal vehicles, I think my kids are also be going bigger. I think after a few years, they also have a license. Then we, that's why we need a future. Somebody can complain we need a more vehicle permission. Then, because my kids get a license, then we need a more vehicles. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. And another thing, too, how would you like people build million dollar homes around you and they have to put up with this? You know, if you have one people bringing it in, it's fine. I live in a neighborhood where people have four cars, the family, and people complain and they have to remove it. That's the bylaw. And we have to abide by it. Because we have to I, abide with what the bylaw says. Because we are not, a, can I speak? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, because when you build the house, I don't know about these bylaws because they guys, the RRPD is asking me a letter of attend. Why you need a big house? Because if that many people that live in the house, everyone need a car, everyone need a vehicle, need to go to work or something. Uh, this, this, go ahead. Sorry. Because it should be depends on the how many people lives in the house. So everyone need a vehicle, need to go to a work, no need to go out. But it seems like all the vehicles that is owned are cube vans, it appears to me. The whole family own cube vans? No, these are only three cube vans. Three cube vans. Yeah. Well. But all, all, all of the small cars and pickup trucks like that. You know, there's so much complaints about that from the neighbors and everybody. Even calls, although it's not my ward, they're calling. And what's going on in West St. Paul? Why is this being allowed? You know, they moved here to live peacefully and quietly. And I know a number of people out there, they work shift work, different shifts. And they come in and they need time to rest. That's all my questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Councillor Link, any questions for the applicant? Uh, I'm wondering, were you made aware when you were building your home, that you were building your home in a residential area where uh, there's some reasonable expectations of compatibility with what happens in the neighborhood in terms of what the buildings appear like, um, the number of vehicles that are permitted, um, are you saying that you were not aware of any of the zoning issues when you were building your home? Yes, um, we were not in fact aware because when we were making our house and 
the city saw our house plans. All they asked was a letter of intent of why our house was so big. And we mentioned that we had a big family and they did not tell us any further. They did not, they did not warn us about this. They did not warn us about the vehicles and we did not come aware to this until recently. However, are you aware that it's your responsibility if you're building a home, you need to take the responsibility and find out what is allowed and what is not allowed. Well, we were only aware to certain things. We did not question it then. We thought that if there were different things happening in our residence, then the, the government would make us aware. Well, uh, you have to take responsibility yourself to be aware of, of, of issues such as how many cars are allowed. Um, and it looks as if, uh, I'm gonna ask the question, do you take phone calls uh, from someone who needs plumbing work right at your home? Could you repeat the question? When someone uh, wants you to plumb, to do some plumbing work, um, do you take phone calls and make arrangements for that work out of your home? No. 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 Well, unfortunately, because you have all those business vehicles coming and going, it gives the impression that you are running a business out of your home. In fact, the plumbing business is um, referred to in our zoning bylaw as a home industry. And home industries are just not allowed in any residential area in the whole area. Well, See, I, I quietly didn't get it. What are you? I'm asking if you were aware that it appears that you are running a home business out of your home and that people have that impression because of the comings and goings of the business vehicles, which are um, beyond the number that are allowed at your home to be parked. Because uh, I, as I mentioned before, because when I can go to a work, then I drive my van to the work in the evening, I can be come back. That's it. Not be going in and out, in and out all day like that. It just well, could be morning, we left and come back in the evening. That's it. All right. Thank you. No more questions. Councillor Link. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the applicants? Yes, I have a question. I'm just wondering how many of your family members are employed by your business? Uh, we have five. So five, five family members are employed there and you want 16 vehicles. So 11 are not employed, are not family, right? Right? I didn't understand. So I didn't understand. You you said the five are my employed under my business, right? Maybe your daughter can answer the question. Madam, I'm asking you this question. How many people in your family are employed by the plumbing business? Five. Five. So the remaining vehicles, you have set 16 vehicles you're asking for. How many of those are not plumbing? Nine. Nine vehicles. Okay. Are you aware this is a single no, family? No. Dwelling? Sorry, she had a wrong math there. Okay. So we have a five employees under employed under my business. So we have five business vehicles and the rest of the eleven are our personal vehicles. Okay. And sir, you, what do you think is a single family dwelling? Think it's just extended family and cousins uh, and uh, aunts and uncles. This is, a, this is in our community because we are three brothers. They have a kids there. My mom. We all live together in my community. Three families together. living in there. Is that correct? Three brothers, so, three families. Madam Mayor, we're not talking about this. Sorry, this is point of order. Just we're talking about the cars in the driveway. We're not talking about. How many people are in the home? We're talking about a single family dwelling. 
That's what we're talking about. Well, it depends what you define a family. Because is in, our, in, in our culture, we like to live in joint family. We are three brothers and my mom, right? So all we live together and we all have kids and we want nephew. Okay, so you want, so you want to have 16 vehicles in the driveway. That's what you're asking for. Not on the driveway, because in my garages too, maybe only five vehicles or six vehicles in the, in, in the driveway for all other in my garage. We have a four garage also. Okay, how many vans would you have? Four, no, one, two, three, three vans and one pickup truck. All right, those are all the questions I have for you right now. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Um, just a couple of comments and questions uh, from me. Uh, I do want to thank you for submitting an application um, for recognizing this and, and coming forward to Council for that. Um, that's not something everybody does, and so I appreciate that you have both come to Council with the variation request. Um, I also want to welcome you to West St. Paul. Um, we're definitely not here to judge family size or family type, and I want to welcome you to our community. Um, the concern and what we're looking at before us, as you know, is, is the number of parking spots and just what the, uh, what's allowable in your area and what you're bringing to our attention to consider. So uh, I just want you to know that, that that is what Council will be focusing on in terms of making this decision. I also just wanted to ask a question in follow-up uh, regarding the number of vehicles. So you had mentioned that you have nine drivers. You don't currently have 16 vehicles that you're wanting in your driveway. This no, is no, no. future no. use. How many vehicles are you looking to have in your driveway right now? And, and I'm just a bit confused on the comments that you made about now and for the future. Five, five vehicles in the driveway right now because we have a 10 vehicles right now. Right now we have only uh, 10, 11. 10. To total 11 vehicles we have right now. Because future, I just requesting for 16, because in future my kids got license or something, then we have a, this problem again. So that's why I request for 16. Currently, we own 11 vehicles. I, I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. And I, I think you can see councils definitely got concerns because this is this is a lot above the normal for what's permitted for the area. So I'm, I'm sure you can both appreciate the concerns coming from council when this is four times the what would be permitted in the area. Yes, we understand. I'm going to be able to come back to you both. We're going to see if there's anyone registered in support opposition or for information. And then you'll both have an opportunity to respond to the comments uh, made. And so I ask that you both uh, stay on the line and, and, and listen to what's being said and you will have an opportunity to comment to council again. Ms. Elias, have we got anyone registered in support of the application wanting to speak with council this evening? No one else registered in support. Uh, we do have some people registered against the application. We have uh, Neil Cario with us this evening registered against. Welcome, Mr. Terrio. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Thank you. Can Great, you thanks. I'm going to turn it over to you and you can present to council uh, your concerns. Okay, uh, just quickly. So when we bought this property here, um, we signed on to a specific architectural control guideline. This is an upscale residential area. Uh, we're not a commercial zoned area. Um, as Mr. Eno noted before, um, I would take exception with what our definition of a multifamily home is um, just because I think that's going to be an issue going down the road. So as far as the number of vehicles go, uh, our main concern is that not so much, well, I'll rephrase. Either way, there's way too many vehicles going on. They're running a business out of both of their garages. They have an attached four car garage. They have an unattached what looks to be 1600 square foot plus. Um, they use those facilities as a warehouse. So there is multiple deliveries per day that show up that uh, stock those areas. Uh, in addition to that, they have um, multiple 
like tub surrounds and whatever else that are just kind of kicking around out either beside the garage or behind the house. And I think that's pretty much the majority of what I had to say. Great, thank you. I'm gonna see if council has any questions for you. Councilor Prague, any questions for Mr. Terrio? Yeah, Mr. Terrio, you live um, close by this residence in close proximity? That's correct. And um, so I heard you saying there's uh, wash tubs and so outside in the yard. Yeah, that's correct. Their property is used as a warehouse as well. So it's not it's not simply like I would completely refute their statement that they only come and go in the vehicles. It's it's much more than that. They are running their business out of there. They might have you know like he said he has a a secondary shop, but you know. Some of the garage is open right now and you know they have all kinds of piping and whatever so it's not simply just that they're trying to cut out the middleman of driving to work and driving home it's much more significant than that thank you terrio for answering my questions thank and appreciate you being on this thank you councillor bassetti any questions for mr terrio first of all thank you mr terrio for giving us your I guess your opinion, because you're seeing it on a daily basis where, you know, not all of us have seen it on a daily basis. We've had some updates and I've been, like I said, I've been out in the area with some other residents about other stuff. And I guess we're hearing it from you that it, it is an ongoing situation and that is the complaints that I've heard from residents. So thanks for your time and giving us your opinion on it. Thank you. Councillor Cliver, any questions? Good evening, Mr. Terrio. Oh, I'm just wondering, how often do you see the vans going up and down the street? Uh, each one of them at least once a day. See so them more usually, frequently or just once a day? Uh, on the average, it's probably more than one trip a day, but... Okay. Um, how many vans have you ever seen at, at once on the property? or construction vehicles of any kind? Um, I'm pretty certain I've seen four vans that yeah. that come and go. So I don't know if that's a change. I know they now have a pickup truck that I don't believe they had before. So I don't know if that's replaced a vehicle that is unserviceable now. And, and what about uh, passenger vehicles, just like cars or SUVs? How many of those have you seen on there? Uh, well, their family runs with, I think, at least two minivans. Like, there's two minivans, there's another vehicle. There was a derelict vehicle that sat all winter. Um, but I think it's just sitting in the backyard now. Okay. And then, it like, it looks at, it appears that they can actually park some of the vans inside the garage. That wasn't always the case in the past. Like, all the vans were outside. Um, okay. And the other issue too, just if I can expand for one second, is the fact that they don't have enough room right now to park almost the vehicles they have when it comes to winter. Um, they don't have the equipment to, so first and foremost, like they don't have enough room in the first place to even house the vehicles they have. Um, we had past issues where they were parking on dry mud and then it would rain and they would, um, well, there were once or twice where they weren't even able, like capable to get the vehicle out, it was so stuck, but there's mud all over the road, you know, whatever. So, you know, if they want to expand the amount of parking they have, they're gonna to have to turn half of their front yard into a parking lot. And that's like, again, this all comes down to, this is a commercial operation that they're running out of their home. So it's Do you have also any safety not, issues? Do you have any concerns for safety? No, I don't. Um, to their credit, I think they, you know, they drive slow enough. Um, I think some of the people that either were there, they were characterized as some of their trades that were working in the home. Um, I don't know that I necessarily buy 100% of that statement because I'm pretty certain I would see those guys come home, jump out of a big white truck and then jump into their vehicle that was also parked on the road and then go home. 
So I don't know if that situation has changed or not, but I can, you know, from my personal opinion, I can guarantee they had employees that were driving 255 to Lowly Lane, parking there, starting their workday there, ending their workday, and then driving home. And they were parking either on the road. Uh, I think that was raised to them. And then they started, there would be this big shuffle of vehicles where they'd show up, park on the road, get into their vehicles, drive the white vans onto the road and then move the other vehicles into the driveway. So at least it wasn't on the road because there's obviously a lot of construction that's going on around here as well. We have a couple of homes that are still being built. Okay, well, that's all my questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending tonight. Thanks. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Terrio? I just want to point out to Mr. Terrio that I do appreciate you attending the meeting and um, sharing your thoughts. And I know that um, a letter was written by the applicant that he wanted to, and, and I honestly believe, wanted to fit into the neighborhood, get along with the neighbors. And you're honestly uh, telling him what it feels like to be a neighbor. And I think he will appreciate hearing your thoughts as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Uh, I echo the uh, the thanks raised by uh, Council, Mr. Terrio, for being here and sharing your perspective across the street. Um, I did hear a few issues uh, that I think will need to be addressed separately, and, and I'm hoping that our planner, Mr. Eno, is taking note of those as well, um, that are not part of this application in terms of a derelict vehicle, which is not permitted in West St. Paul, which our municipality will take note of. And then... Uh, concerns about a business operating from here. So while that's not part of this application, I, uh, I believe Red River Planning uh, will be following up on that uh, concern raised because that is investigated and on-site visits take place to confirm whether a business uh, from home is running or not. So I do really appreciate you raising that issue. If you don't hear us discussing that in more detail, I just want you to be aware as to why, um, and, and that will certainly be followed up on. Thank you. Can I actually just add one quick thing? Ms. Elias, have we got anyone else registered to speak uh, against this application here this evening? Uh, Mayor Christian, I think Mr. Terrio wanted to add one more comment. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Go ahead, Mr. Terrio, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to add that um, I really echo the comment that uh, Councillor Link made about the fact that this may kind of set some sort of precedent. Um, I mean, my, pers my personal opinion, I wanna get along with anybody, um, but I think we're being taken advantage of here. Um, I think the next issue that's gonna come up down, uh, literally down the street, uh, the very Western end of our cul-de-sac, there is a single family dwelling that apparently is supposed to only hold two people or uh, two adults and two children is much more than 5,000 square feet. Um, and I think we're going to run into the exact same issues here again, where it's, uh, at, you know, beg for forgiveness as opposed to, you know, asking for permission in the first half, as far as running a business out of their home, et cetera, et cetera. Ms. Elias, I'll turn it back over to you. Do we have anyone else registered to speak in opposition? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have. Uh, Ryan Shank with us this evening. He's registered against. Welcome, Mr. Shank. Are you able to hear us okay? Yeah. I am, yes. Thank you. Great. I will turn it over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and, and Council, and uh, I want to thank you uh, for this opportunity to uh, to speak before Council. As I'm sure you can appreciate, um, this is a bit of a, a bit of an awkward situation because, as, as I'm sure everybody's aware, we are a pretty tight knit neighborhood, uh, and family is important. And you know, in, in this particular case, the applicant, uh, our kids are in the same class, uh, so it, it, it's certainly a, a bit of a, a difficult circumstance. And and I do want to start off by uh, by expressing my appreciation for the transparency that the applicant has has indicated in their letter. Um, you know, the, the reality is that there's there's no there's nothing hidden in this letter. 
Um, you know, when we take a look at, uh, at what's been identified, if we take a look at the letter on page six of eight, that explains the circumstance. And, and I, I truly do appreciate that the family is wanting to address this, the, the challenges that us as, as neighbours are experiencing. Uh, but in this particular case, if we take a look at the second paragraph, there is acknowledgement that it is, there is a family run business um, in which the, the vehicles used for that purpose are in fact operating out of that residence there. Um, you know, the work vehicles are parked in the driveway. And, you know, again, it talks about, you know, being used on a daily basis for work purposes. Um, I, I can attest to the fact that um, individuals, employees are going and have gone in that past to that house to pick up a vehicle. And the reason I can attest to that is because I have had to address a number of their employees for their dangerous driving coming into the neighborhood. I had an instance where my kids were coming out of the driveway and almost got hit by their vehicle. One of my neighbors saw it and I saw it. And so again, you know, the dangerous driving that's been happening, that's being, uh, that, that's occurring because of this operation in there. Um, you know, and I have, I've spoken with the employees and I've also spoken with the family in, in the house. And, and again, you know, the family has been understanding to acknowledge our concern in the dangerous driving that has occurred and that they would talk to the individual. And, and I really do thank the family for that. Unfortunately, the employees coming into the neighborhood don't have a vested interest in ensuring the safety of those that are there. So there, there has been some life safety aspects of this that is part of the driver for this. Uh, I think it's also worth noting that in paragraph three, uh, there, the, the family themselves indicate, you know, that work materials, uh, daily stock is being housed there, including pipes, fittings, some fixtures, speaking from the letter. Um, you know, it's uh, it, things that are visible to the public and, and, and out of respect to the family, I won't go into too much detail, However, from the road, you can see the business operation and the materials associated with it. Um, you know, I don't know if procedure requires me to echo and, and repeat a lot of what uh, Mr. Uh, what, what, uh, Mr. Terrio has said, and, and of course, being mindful of time, um, you know, please do tell me if I do need to, to identify that. But I certainly echo and can attest uh, to to what one of the other neighbors has uh, has indicated there. So this has had an impact to us in the neighborhood. And again, we came into a neighborhood acknowledging a development agreement and acknowledging uh, you know what the what the developer had in mind for it. Um, uh, so I, I you know again I can speak to the fact that you know the there were and have been employees that have come that have picked up vehicles. I have seen them myself as well hop out of the vehicles, go into the other vehicles. Um, you know, I, I can give you descriptions of vehicles in those cases because those are ones that we've had issues with in the past. Um, you know, I, I can speak to the fact of the supply deliveries as well. I have seen them, they are coming uh, <laughs> quite frequently. It's increased the level of traffic. Again, bringing people who don't have a vested interest in protecting and preserving our community and, and, and the people within it. Um, you know, as well as, you know, the vehicles from the, the business, um, we do see that there are some, some times where they do come at, you know, kind of on a bit of a pattern, but I can tell you that they do come at, and come and go at all hours, um, whether it's, you know, at, you know, throughout the day, uh, whether they're picking up supplies or restocking, I really can't tell you, but I can tell you that they're there, they're loading and they're unloading. And, you know, the, the main patterns absolutely are certainly you know, the morning leaving to the job sites because we see them on their phone looking at the paperwork that's on their dash, uh, you know, as they drive to the job site and then, you know, coming back in, in the evenings typically, but we do see uh, an increase in influx of traffic from those vehicles as well. Um, so again, not to, not to belabor what we're hearing today, but certainly, uh, you know, the, the applicant themselves clearly identify that there is a business operation occurring there and it has had implications not just to livability but to the safety of the people in there and it is promoting a level of traffic that you would expect in a commercial area so thank you very much for your time thank you very much for uh hearing hearing me out uh you know in, in the sake of time i do echo and share in uh in in one of the other neighbors concerns or that that previously spoke so thank you very much thank you mr shank
I'm going to see if there are any questions for you from council. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Shank? Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Mr. Shank, have you had any safety issues with respect to the vehicles on that street as far as uh, driving and so forth? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and and the, the reality is, is, you know, in they are our neighbors, our kids in the same class, you know, we've connected and engaged with the neighbors, but at some point you just kind of go, oh, you know, you don't want to call the RCMP. You don't want to take it to that level. You know, we do want to get along, right? And so it's kind of like, you know, how far do you really go to address employees, staff, and people who live there in, in creating this uh, what what I feel is is dangerous for our kids you know the along the way you know the kids all come together they hang out together they move from house to house together right in some cases they go across the backyards but in other cases you can't just go across the backyards the kids do have to go out on the roads it truly is a family environment and so absolutely yes um, but we still want to have a good relationship with the family and the, and the people that live there. You know, they walk by every night as a family, you know, we wave at them on the front step. Right. So it certainly brings, it makes it an awkward type of situation. How many vehicles have you seen there maximum at any one time? Maximum at any one time. Oh. Uh, well, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, I've certainly seen the, the four bands. Um, at uh, one point, a large part of them were identified as Group 3 plumbing on this side. Um, and it, it appeared that uh, after the complaint was filed, uh, the majority of them did not have Group 3 plumbing um, on that. Um, I've seen, uh, in terms of employee vehicles, um, there's, there's been a, a white vehicle with a snowman plate that belonged to one of their staff. There's been an amber vehicle uh, that was also one of their staff. Um, and, and they were identified as staff by the individuals I spoke to who were driving their vehicles and I have physically seen them get into those vehicles. Uh, in terms of delivery vehicles, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it, they, there's lots. They, they, they come and they go and, you know, I, I couldn't give you a number on that. There's just certainly an, a notable increase of traffic that would not be residential traffic. Okay, thank you for, your, for the clarification. Any other questions for Mr. Shank? Hearing and seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Shank, for coming and appearing before council this evening. Much appreciated. Thank you for your time. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone else registered to speak in opposition or for information? Uh, yes, we have Greg Allen registered against. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you, yes. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm the next door neighbor to uh, to the applicant. Uh, so first, I just want to say that uh, kind of reiterate what everyone said. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, we're put in this position uh, as as a neighbor. I, I'm a big believer in if you want better neighbors to just be a better neighbor. Um, I, I want to have a, a good community to live in, but uh, unfortunately, this application has been put forward, so I I feel no choice but to speak to it. Um, to, to kind of frame the conversation here, uh, as it's been set, uh, been reiterated by uh, Mr. Terrio and Mr. Shank, this is not an application for more parking. This is an application, uh, a de facto application to turn this into a commercial job site. Um, I understand uh, why this would be um, the goal of, of the applicant. Uh, I don't, I understand the difficulties of, of not having the knowledge and being put in this position. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm here kind of with the interests of my family that I need to speak to. Um, we chose to live in, in the community of West St. Paul for a reason, specifically targeting a rural residential neighborhood. Um, if we wanted to live in a commercial development, we, um, I suppose we could have, could have sought that a different location to do that. Um, obviously there's lots of commercial locations in West St. Paul that uh, are suitable for these types of developments, but, um, I don't feel that this is, is an appropriate uh, place for this as, as it was spoken to in regards to like the home industry issue. If, for me as the next door neighbor, I can say with the, with the utmost certainty, this is a commercial job site. Um, vehicle traffic is constant from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, Group three plumbing appears to be a fairly successful business uh, run by Mr. Gershran, who uh, is a very family oriented person. Uh, I appreciate the merits of what 
he's doing with his family and the closeness of their of their family. Um, unfortunately, they do employ people and they're coming and going uh, early in the morning and late into night. I, I can say with certainty they're employees based on their attire, whether it be steel toe boots, reflective clothing, um, and the fact of how they arrive at the location and then how they depart. Um, it, it's, it's very clear to me what's going on. Um, as, as Mr. Tarot spoke to, their garages aren't full of vehicles. Their garages are full of plumbing material. It's not uncommon when I am home um, to see flatbeds of material showing up and being unloaded into these garages. It's, it's just, it is a duck. It, it looks like it and it walks like it and it quacks like it. Um, it's, it's quite unfortunate that we're here today. Uh, of course, because for me and my family, we chose to live in West St. Paul, to live in a quiet neighborhood, to get away from the hustle and the bustle. And now uh, we're in a situation where we have a, a commercial site next to us. I, I've, I can say for our family, we've made a choice to just kind of stay out of it as best we can. We haven't made any formal complaints. We've just trying to like kind of kept our head down and, and mind our own business. But uh, unfortunately, we're here today. I apologize for the background noise I, I, as I'm still at work right now. Um, and I just also want to reiterate many of the same points I apologize for that. Um, I have great concern for the, the long-term impacts of, of an increase. So can you hear me? Yes. Yep. We can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I have, uh, strong concerns if this, uh, if this application is, is increased by one single vehicle, uh, to be honest with you, um, for many reasons. Uh, the fact that there's a derelict vehicle there just speaks to um, the willingness to comply with preset bylaws, um, the impacts with other uh, business owners in the neighborhood who are not willing to have an offsite for their locations, and, and what the impact that it will have on this community. This is, you know, um, to, to build and to construct our home, we had to go through a rigorous, um, you know, uh, architectural guideline, which obviously is outside of the bylaw, but still spoke to the level of a home that was being built in this area. And, and this, what, what's occurring right now just flies absolutely in the face of it. Um, uh, I, it's, it's upsetting for me as I have a young family. I picked this, I, I, we selected this site. We built what is supposed to be our dream home for my young family to, to live in quiet. And I have to guard my kids when their cars are on the road. Um, I will say that the family, like the Greenwald family, when I see them operating vehicles, they operate them very respectfully. They're, they're, they're cognitive of it, as, as uh, Mr. Shank said, like they are stakeholders in the neighborhood. However, when their employees are coming and going from the neighborhood, they do not care. They, they, when they're in their vehicles, they're driving quite quickly, they're on their phones, they're not paying attention, they're running stop signs, it's just constant. Um, I, again, I apologize for being so open and frank in this situation, but I, I'm, I feel that I'm left with no choice. Thank you, Mr. Allen. We appreciate you being here and we appreciate your honesty. And what I'm hearing from you and your other neighbors is this is a great opportunity to raise your concerns um, in, and in a respectful way. So I appreciate you all coming forward. And certainly I can see the respect that you have for your neighbor. And we're talking about an issue and the concerns of it. So I want to thank you. You guys have been really respectful and focusing on the issue. And I know you mentioned it's unfortunate that we're here today, but it's good that we're here today because we have this opportunity to address it. So um, I'm going to see if there are any questions for you from Council. Councillor Bassetti, go ahead. Well, thanks, Mr. Allen, for you and your neighbors coming out and, you know, painting the picture a little bit clearer for the rest of Council, you know, from outside the, the walls of their four, of the four home, of the Gruwal home. Um, I understand you're saying that it, we're here tonight to deal with the business. I, I agree with that, but we have to look at what's been put presented in front of us. There might be more brought in front of us at a further time, but tonight, I guess all we get to look at is the part with the vehicles in the driveway. There's been a lot of information brought forward to us as the mayor has said to, to our planner that will probably be coming up at a further time or actions will be asked to be clarified. So I, I just wanted to clarify that and thank you guys for your time. And I hope we can get this cleared out so that you and your family feel safe in your area that you picked to build your dream home. Any other questions for Mr. Allen? 
Seeing none, Mr. Allen, I do just want to thank you for taking the time to be here and to, to join in uh, from work. It is really important that council make informed decisions, and I know it takes people's time to participate in this, and we really um, thank you for participating and value the participation of everyone here tonight. So thank you for that. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone else registered to speak this evening? Uh, yes, we have Jared Nickel registered against. He's with us this evening. Welcome, are you able to hear us okay? Yes, can you hear me? We can, yes. So you've heard uh, some of the comments um, from your neighbors and I guess just in the to in the knowledge of time and the time that we have on the application, is there anything new that you're wanting to add for council in terms of us making a decision on this application? Yeah, no, that's a very important point. Uh, thank you very much, council, uh, for, for your time today. Again, I am against this. Um, most of the items, again, I personally am speaking to the number of personal vehicles in the application, which was for the request from 4 to 16. Uh, I do live at 18 Rosemary Path, uh, so I'm not directly as close uh, to the house in Tivoli as others, but I am, I can see the house from my from my second floor. Um, at the end of the day, really, this, this comes down to, the, you know, the, the considerations here as, as noted in front of council from the application. Um, you know, would this be, if approved, would the 16 be compatible with the general nature of the surrounding area? I would suggest from what we've heard, the answer is no. Um, is there, would this negatively affect other properties uh, in the surrounding area? I would suggest yes. We've heard a number of items regarding safety uh, of individuals, uh, in addition to the conflict of uh, the contrast of this to property values and the nature of the rural residential for which all these homes were built. That was all part of the development plan. The rule of four parked vehicles exists for a reason. I think we've had more than enough demonstration as to why that is. Um, item number three, is the rule of four causing the current applicant any injury or any effect to their negatively to their personal property? I said the answer is no. Uh, to Councillor Link's point earlier, it, is, it behooves all of each and every one of us as owners to understand the rules. If we don't understand the rules ourselves, it, we are also then required to get counsel or advice to understand and operate within the bylaws. The bylaws are public, they're not hidden. And yes, it, it's not, uh, so I, I find some of the, the applicants' uh, acknowledgements here they clearly understood when they were building the house that there was a need for um, a, uh, sorry, a, a certain declaration of uh, a self-declaration form. Clearly they tried to comply with that and yet they seem to be uh, acknowledged ignorance uh, of other aspects of, of the bylaw. This seems very self-selective. Um, at the end of the day, I, I am quite concerned as well about does this pave the path uh, or chart a path for other applicants that may see this uh, go through if it is approved. Um, um, that's more or less it. Um, I find the request to be just completely outrageous. Um, even the, the question as raised by the applicant in their April 13th letter, uh, trying to justify the size of the acreage uh, for a, a de facto accommodation of, of additional vehicles to me is irrelevant. Um, the rule of four existed when they bought the property and when they were building the property and was to be done within those constraint, constraints. Um, to another councillor that also acknowledged the fact of individuals that wish to have big families, that's their own personal business. Um, that's fine and they need to operate within the law. Um, I, I know there's a family on Toshack that has seven children, a mom and dad and seven children. My kids go to school with them. They don't run into this issue. Um, they're operating within the law, they're law-abiding citizens. So I'll end my comments there. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any, any questions from council? Thank you very much for being here as well to speak to council on this tonight. And, and we really much, very much appreciate your feedback on this. Thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone else registered to speak in opposition or for information? No one else registered to speak in opposition, Madam Mayor, but we do have a number uh, that submitted comments in opposition. Uh, we have Philip and Gorette Defont. 
I believe. Uh, Larissa Shank, Corrado Lau, Ian McLeod, Mark Storozak, Derek and Anna Bogdan, Michael Sinchena, Phil Cola Truglio, Ainsley Gretchen, Lucas and Kimberly McIntosh, and Dustin Fernie. Apologies for any mis, uh, mispronunciations. Um, just for, for uh, um, our audience's uh, uh, awareness and the, the applicants, uh, there were some comments in opposition submitted and provided to council earlier. Uh, some of these comments included um, that the vans from this property are speeding on the streets, uh, concern about safety of children and others. There will be an increased amount of traffic from em employees picking up vehicles. The roads in the area are residential and don't have pedestrian walkways, causing people to walk and bike on the road. These roads shouldn't be subject to daily commercial traffic to facilitate a business. Uh, vans come and go from the property all day. Increasing the amount of vehicles permitted would facilitate this company to operate from the home. Uh, there was general, general concern about a business of this type operating in a residential neighborhood. Concern about damage to local streets uh, and that the infrastructure is not meant for large vehicles. Um, uh, this application, if approved, uh, reduces desire to live in the neighborhood. There was question raised about how accessibility uh, or how accessible the property would be for emergency vehicles. Um, also comment made that passing this variance would set a, a negative precedent. Um, that's, a, that's about it. No one else registered against uh, in support or for information. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Um, Mr. Grill, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you and your daughter. So you've, you've heard a lot of comments from from your neighbors in the area and a lot of concerns that they have raised. And I wanna provide you both with an opportunity, uh, you get that opportunity to speak uh, to those comments and the issues that have been raised. First of all, thank you for all my neighbors and to you. So is our issues are raised by my neighbors like that is speeding and business, something like that. And first of all, I is complaining about uh, safety for speeding. And I know that one because um, like a year ago, uh, cause that neighbor has come to my home also personally. And uh, he says, there is a one guy came in this house very, very speed up and uh, by the car. And I remember that accident and uh, I just tell them because uh, this is a working here, my guy. And already I tell the guys, don't be speed up this street. The speed limit is 50 and always we just come lower than 50. And uh, because I know that accident, because I know that sometimes the guys are uh, came very fast. They are youngsters. And I just uh, tell them people that don't be speed up. But those all are working in my home because I told you before we are a trained man, we are the handyman. We a lot of work did my home because we, could, we do our work slowly and we need to go on my work also. Then we have some free time. We do our work in my home. So second thing is about the business is running from my home because uh, I just told you before, because we not stock up the many things in the house. It's just my vehicles here because if something is extra, those should be my house construction. Some tubs are, they can be raised or something. Those I need to use my in my basement. This is only one tub is outside in my yard. This for my basement, I want to use in my basement. So nothing else I know because of what about the neighbors and everything. Because uh, I also we uh, live in a residential area. This is not a commercial area or commercial zoning like that. So I understand that if they have any problem or something and I can do better, what I can better do in the future if they have a my neighborhood has any problems for us or something. Again, we have a many people in the house, so everyone needs to be come and go, come and go for groceries, for kids go to a school or something like that. They need to be drive and come and go because it's a vehicle traffic or something, because this whole area is not developed yet. Because when the, all the houses are built here, 
then they can be think how much traffic here because only 10 or 9 or 11 houses in this neighborhood right now because when the, this whole neighborhood should be built then they can be think how much more traffic is here because if you can thinking about the traffic and the roads and everything because there are, i think so many lots are empty here because only 10 and 11 houses are here yet oh that's all i can be speak Thank you, Mr. Grewal. I'll see if council has any further questions for you. Anyone have any further questions for clarification? I don't see any further questions for you. I do want to thank uh, you both, you and your daughter and your family for bringing this application forward. Um, you know, you're, you've gone about it the right way in terms of coming to council and asking to do something that is not permitted within the zoning and asking for variance. So you've gone about it the right way to come to council. Um, you know, I, I, as we mentioned, family sizes is, is not an issue. There's an issue here on the number of parking and what's permitted on that. And, uh, and, and I think you should all feel very comfortable that your, your neighbors all really like you guys very much. It's the, it's the traffic and the concerns and, and uh, comments about the business that are going on. So um, it, it's challenging issues, but we thank you for being here tonight. If there are no further questions from council, I will read the resolution for us to close the public hearing for this evening. Me. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. I'll read the resolution and we can discuss. Whereas an application for variance order 4422 was received for the property located at 55 Tivoli Lane to increase the permitted number of vehicles in an RR rural residential zone from required four maximum to 16 maximum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representation both for and against the application. Therefore, Therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the Arm of West St. Paul do hereby approve variation order 4422 with the following conditions. The variance is limited to what is proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new variance. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits and approvals from the Red River Planning District if required. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend that deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Brissetti. Any further discussion on this application? Councillor Link, I'll turn it to you. Is there anything further that you're wanting to discuss? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Bissetti, any further comments for discussion? Councillor Kleiber? Yes, I would just say that um, there's a couple of different things in play here, as was commented, that need to be addressed. Um, for me, there's, I don't think it's the number of vehicles for, for the, let me put it this way to have more vehicles also uh, goes to what is what is being conducted at the property and so those two things kind of go hand in hand in this application um, I mean my my own uh, husband had seven kids in the family and there wasn't 16 vehicles or eight vehicles in the in the parking lot so I think that there's a couple of different things and I'm sure council is aware that that are going on here. I do have a concern about safety here as well. <clears throat> there are, I have had a complaint um, about um, children and children's safety in that area. Uh, so uh, I think there's a number of issues going on here. And I think that um, I have some concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. 
Councillor Pereg, any comments for discussion? Yeah, um, I totally agree with Councillor Fiber, what she indicated. And all the facts that was presented, you could see what's happening and the neighbors are trying to be neighborly. They're not against anybody living there with them, but they want to be neighborly. They want to live in harmony. But with this going on, it shows during their, their, their presentation, they're showing their honesty. They want to live good. So there's some other stuff going on there that was presented that opened a whole new can of worms. Not just the parking. It's not just the parking here. A whole can of worms is opened up here. And based my decision on the facts that was presented. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Um, for me, um, I've found this very informative. I think there's definitely going to be follow up in terms of home business operation from the letter that the applicants have submitted. And so I know that's not on the table for discussion and they're not asking for a variance to run a business out of their home, but clearly there's going to be some follow up. Um, the things I'm taking into consideration in making the decision um, are the legal requirements presented by the planner and that guide us uh, in our decision making under the Planning Act is the varying the application uh, does it create, is it compatible with the general nature of the surrounding area? And what we're hearing is no, this is not at all compatible with the surrounding area. Will it be detrimental to the health and welfare of people living in the surrounding area and negatively affect people on other properties, potential development in the surrounding area? And what I'm hearing is clearly yes. Is it the minimum modifications of a zoning bylaw required to relieve injurious effect? Um, we're hearing from the applicants that they're wanting to create future parking opportunities. And so it's not the minimum modifications where they're asking for uh, an extension of having five vehicles instead of four or six. So I have concerns that they're asking for four times what is permitted in this area. Is it generally consistent uh, with the development plan, zoning bylaw, secondary plan? No, it's not. So I think uh, in terms of the laws that we have to look at when we are making decisions and bringing it back to the requirements, um, I'm not satisfied that this application uh, meets the requirements. I also have concerns, um, you know, we want people to be in West St. Paul and we welcome all families and all family types. But with that said, there's zoning bylaws and requirements of each area. And if, if you can function in this area that you've chosen to live in with a family, a large family and four vehicles, um, then this is the place for you. If you've got a large family and you need 16 vehicles, this is not the location for you. Um, so. You know, we, we have all of these people that have purchased homes in this area with assumptions that this council will uphold our zoning bylaws and, and that they buy into an area and have done their research of what is permitted in that area and what is not. And it's concerning to think that somebody would buy in an area knowing that everybody's going to have four, four vehicles in their driveway, that I'll be watching for my kids' safety in that area, but there'll be four vehicles per driveway times the number of homes in that development not 16 cars per uh, residential lot in that area. Um, so for me, there's lots of things uh, to consider with this. And, and for that reason, I won't be able to support the application brought forward um, tonight. And I appreciate everybody that participated in the public hearing this evening. We've all gone around the table and had an opportunity to comment. With that said, I have a mover and a seconder and I will call for the vote. All those Could I have a recorded favor? vote, please. Could I have a recorded vote, please? Request for a recorded vote from Councillor Kleiber. Thank you. All those in favor? All those opposed? And that is defeated. Right. We are on item 5.4. I'll read the resolution to open the public hearing. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Uh, could we take a break after this application? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Be it resolved at this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 105 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? It's moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Eno, we'll turn it back over to you.
Thank you, Mayor. This is conditional use application number CU8 of 2022. It's for a property located at 763 Capitalist Drive. And the purpose of this application is that the applicant wishes to establish a, uh, a fitness center, for lack of a better term, within the CH commercial highway zone. Here's the subject property outlined in a yellow there. You can see the existing uh, building. Uh, they're proposing to uh, occupy, I believe it's unit number five. Oh, there we go which is at the north end of, uh, uh, of that existing building. And this actually falls under uh, the conditional use category called uh, any other commercial use not listed. It's kind of that catch all for, uh, for uses that uh, we just couldn't think of and, uh, and where an applicant wants to, uh, wants to propose something to council. So what they're proposing to do is, uh, is establish a gym, a, a CrossFit gym and unit five, which would be about 3,600 square feet, I believe on the main floor. And then I believe there's a little, a little mezzanine with a couple of uh, uh, rooms and a washroom or something like that in there. So uh, just a little bit over 3,600 square feet. Uh, I would also note that for council, a few years ago, you approved uh, a conditional use application at 781 Capulous Drive. And that was for a uh, gymnastics club, and I believe for a CrossFit gym as well. It might even be this one that they're looking to move to. Uh, that space, I believe, if memory serves correct, was about 15,000 square feet. So uh, if council wishes to approve this, there are a couple of standard conditions that we would recommend uh, you include. One is that the conditional use is, uh, is limited to what's been proposed in this application. So if they wanna do something different than what's proposed, they have to come back to council. And the other one is just simply that they obtain all required permits from our office, your office, and uh, Manitoba infrastructure should something be needed just because they're uh, within the highway control zone. Although I'm not sure they would actually need something from them, but just a bit of a fail safe there anyways. If you have any questions, be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Councilor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Eno on the uh, application? Just for clarification, this is the Stark Gymnastics. Sorry, you you said fitness center, and then is this the gymnastics? That's no, I think th this is the CrossFits. Uh, is what they're proposing. Uh, what I was noting was there's a there was a gymnastics club just down the road that you approved uh, a few years ago. I want to say 2017, 2018, something like that. Well, that's it. I was just clarifying because it kind of threw me for a loop there because I know we we've done that that one, and there was another one farther down capitalist. So. Just clarifying. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yeah, I, I understand what Councillor Bassetti is getting at because right on the first page it says that uh, we're going to relocate an existing fit, fitness center and in brackets start CrossFit. Um, so looks like they they intend they just want. A, a larger location. Uh, they want to expand their business of an already successful business. This is pretty straightforward as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for our planner? Yeah, I, I had thought that there was a Stark uh, already in West St. Paul as well. One of the things, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that it is by the gymnastics area. So I think that's where the confusion comes in. One of the things I've noted in that location is the parking. And it is so busy that it is um, overwhelmed with parking. So my question on this application is how many parking spots will be available to this business? I, I don't know the answer to that for this specific business and this unit. Um, what I can say is that the parking that was provided on site meets the requirements for the entire building. But maybe the applicant can clarify how many units or how many spaces have been uh, uh, set aside, for lack of a better term, for this business. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yeah, I was worried about the parking too because there was um, the CrossFit place there. The parking was 
a lot of traffic on the street, a lot of parking on the street there. And it would be nice if they have parkings inside there also for the overflow. I don't mind the business is just the parking I'm all worried about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilor Craig. Question from me. So just to double check, because I'm looking at the map and looking at what belongs to Gateway Church in terms of their commercial upfront and then what's existing. Is this proposal for the existing Ridgemark building that's already up? Or this is a building that is going to be constructed in front of the church? I'm just trying to orient here. This, this is a building that's already there. Okay. So can I ask then what the requirements are from Red River Planning because the comments are made about parking and if this is the building that's already up, all of those parking stalls that are in this picture of the building are full of uh, pickup trucks uh, from Ridgemark. Obviously they're running a business and kudos to them. Um, so I'm wondering how, what amount would have to be allotted? Is, is there a requirement from Red River Planning on how much parking space would have to be made available to this business? Uh, I it, it's outlined in your in your zoning bylaw. Um, it's uh, it gets a little tricky to answer that question just because parking is also based on use of what's happening on a commercial property. Uh, when you have a contractor's establishment versus a warehouse versus a restaurant, there's different parking requirements. I do know that when the buildings were put up, they met the the minimum standards for uh, for parking. We've put in a condition that they have to obtain all required permits from our office, and that usually relates to the uh, to the occupancy permits or the interior renovations that would have to take place. Okay, so they're they're permitted for what they're using. Yeah, I'm going to have to see how this goes then, because we're looking at the diagrams, and I guess we'll ask the applicant in terms of how many spaces are here. I'm a little concerned that they've indicated they're moving because they don't have enough space which would indicate larger client base, more people coming to use their facility. So they may have space on the inside, but where are all these cars going? So thank you, Mr. Eno. Ms. Elias, do we have the applicant available for council? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have Mark Ends with us this evening. He's registered in support. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Mark, are you able going? to hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you good. You guys can hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, I think I can answer most of your questions that have kind of come up. Um, so basically, Paul is currently in, so start. CrossFit is currently in 781 Capula, so you guys aren't, aren't mistaken. And then I'm 763, which is the building right next door. I am a multi-unit building. I just happen to have the front unit and my signs on the front, but it's always been a multi-unit building. So recently it's, it's come to make sense that moving Paul from 781, or Stark, sorry, into unit five of, of 763 made sense for a few reasons. The, the bulk of the parking that you guys see on occasion on the road is actually from gymnastics, uh, not from Stark. Um, she tends to run a couple bigger events which draw in a ton of people a couple times a year. For the most part, they're well within their parking lot. So the idea is actually that um, we're actually moving Paul next door so that he can have a little bit more dedicated space. We do comply actually with the parking stalls that are required and we've actually carved out 14 stalls for him, which typically he has between eight to 12 cars at any given time because he kind of runs classes, right? So there's never like a hundred people running in at one time. He has a really early morning class, after morning, uh, afternoon classes, and then he has evening classes. He can get into more traffic in the evenings, but that is when the other four businesses in our building actually close. So he has access to all of our parking stalls. So we have a pretty good plan for managing traffic and, and the cars um, with this change. Uh, just the new space actually accommodates his business a little bit better. Um, and that's why we're actually moving him just next door. So it is Stark, it is the same business. It's been there for five years. He likes West St. Paul, he wants to stay. He likes what he's seeing with all the new housing and sees um, just a need and wants to stay, but we're just moving him next door. That's essentially what's happening. <clears throat> Great, thank you. I'll see if council has additional questions for you. We appreciate you being here to answer. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Craig, any questions for the applicant? 
So thank you, Mark, for the clarification. At the place you mentioned, there was a lot of traffic when they had that gymnastics thing there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any questions? No. Uh, thank you very much for being available. Just in case there were questions. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? Mr. Hans, are you the applicant? Yes, I'm the applicant um, on behalf of Stark. We're doing the renovation for him. Okay. Do you know how many clients he has? I wouldn't know how many clients he has offhand, but I'm next door to him and he's been with me for five years now. I'm, I'm the building owner too. Um, so I, I don't know what his exact count is, but we've kept pretty close tabs on his actual parking and dealing with the owner just to make how sure many, we have enough. How many parking stalls does he use at any one time? So over the last few months, we've been counting specifically to make sure we can accommodate him. And he usually has between eight to 12 during normal business hours, which is when I have more traffic on site and after business hours, um, I don't actually know, but that's when most of our traffic all leaves at around 4.30. Um, my other tenants all close for business on those times, so then he'll have access to a lot more stalls at that time. And I do have a ton of stalls next door, which is also um, where Keystone currently operates. And we have a plan for the backspace to get more stalls set up for her because she's often the one that requires more parking. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that he's going to need about 12 stalls yeah. plus his staff, right? It's usually 12 total is the cars in his lot, like okay. including, including staff. Yeah. And how many stalls do your other tenants and you use? Because I see a lot of your Ridgemark um, trucks yeah. there at night. So how many do you use? So I actually only use overnight probably about three um, for the ones that aren't going home with my, a bunch of my staff bring their trucks home, like they, they get yeah. to drive them home. Yeah. Um, and then during the day, we'll get up to probably more like six, but then we mm -hmm. usually close around, uh, around 4.30, my guys head home. So we have 14 dedicated stalls for Stark currently, which is more than his current averages during the day. And then after hours, which is his busier time typically, because that's when people come to work out for the most part in the evenings. Um, again, most of ours leave. So, and there's a couple tenants actually beside me yet that also work the same hours that we do. So by 4.30, they all leave. So there's probably another 10 flex stalls for him in the evenings for future. Okay. Um, so what's the total number of stalls in this entirety that you currently have? Not that you're going to make, but you currently have. I would actually have to count because I don't know off the top of my head, but there's roughly probably roughly 45. There's 45. Yeah. Okay. And you're adding some more? How many yeah. more? Yeah. So more we're, we're relaying out uh, the backspace to just kind of make it a little bit more efficient. So we're going to add an additional probably 20 stalls back there, which is on, it's part of our application with Red River Planning right now to just kind of right. get everybody a little bit more organized. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you. That makes more sense. Yeah, you. no problem. Councillor Bissetti, any questions? I guess just more for clarification, Mr. Renz. Um, 763, is that the one that's going to be eventually the entrance to uh, Gateway Church? No, so I'm 763. That's my current building. The one directly um, beside me, so that's Gateway's property right beside us. That at the moment is going to be vacant land by my understanding with their plan. And then the lot directly beside that will actually be their approach. So they'll be about 200 feet before their approach from my corner of my property. Okay, just the maps kind of making things look funny. It's yeah. making it look like that's the entrance to Gateway Church. And I remember on the west side, there was one lot that was Gateway Churches. And then the other side, there was a few lots. So it's kind yeah. of just deceiving. That's why it was kind of a surprise when the planner put up a picture with an existing building. Yeah, no, the, the, the drawing's confusing. Yeah, they, their entrance has a lot west and two lots east before me so there is a couple hundred feet before their entrance yeah well, no, that's, I, I, you know the area pretty good you've, you've yeah. probably built most of the buildings down there so about half the road yeah the <laughs> yeah great thank you we'll see if there's anyone else registered to speak in support or opposition and then you'll get an opportunity to speak again mark thank you thanks miss elias have we got anyone Registered in support, opposition, or for information? No, Madam Mayor, no one else registered on this application. 
Thank you. Anything else that you're wanting to add for council, Mark? No, I think you guys kind of got the gist. I think he's a he's a great uh, business. He wants to stick around. We're just trying to ship them over about 100 feet away from where he currently is. So I think he's a good fit. So. Great. Thank you for being here this evening. Yeah, we'll no close problem. the Thanks. public hearing and council can discuss. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. I will read the resolution. Whereas the applicant has applied for conditional use 822 to permit a fitness center at unit 1-763 Capitalist Drive in the CH Commercial Highway Zone, and whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representation for and against the conditional use application. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Roman Municipality of West St. Paul approves conditional use 822 under the following conditions. The condi one, the conditional use application be limited to what is presented, proposed within this application. Any changes in use will require a new conditional use approval. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District, the Arm of West St. Paul, and Manitoba infrastructure if required. The approval of conditional use will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection 1101 for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline and for a second period of no more than 12 months if an application is received before the expiry of the first extension. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bersetti. We'll go around for discussion. I would ask that if Council would permit, um, I'd like to add a condition that no parking be permitted on Capitalist. If Council would be okay with adding a condition. I'm seeing nods, Councillor Kleiber, Councillor Bersetti, Councillor Link, that's okay. I see the mover and seconder okay with that. So condition three, no parking permitted on Capitalist. Any further discussion from council on the application? Hearing and seeing none then, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. We're going to take a 10 minute break uh, as requested, have a little bit of a break here. So five after, and we'll come back and keep working our way through. Thanks for your patience, Mr. Eno. You probably need a break too. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. We are continuing on with our planning items on this evening's planning meeting. We have item 5.5 for everybody following along, and that is to reconvene public hearing for bylaw 2020-4P. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 741 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Planner, this is probably the first public hearing that we've kind of reconvened in this way for additional information. So um, just to clarify, do we turn to you to do a little bit of a recap on where we are and then go to the applicant and ask them where they're at and if they have additional information for council, if you don't mind? No, that's that's a fair question. I, I think that's probably uh, a fair enough process. I can just kind of remind council and anyone else who's out there watching what this application was about and then turn it over to, to you. Perfect. I'm just going to share my screen just with Council for a quick moment here. Oops. There we go. So just a reminder, this is a zoning bylaw amendment application uh, number 2022-4P. Uh, it's for the property located at 4008 Main Street and the application is proposing to rezone the property from rural residential to a highway commercial uh, zone. So here's just the property uh, outlined in black there along Main Street. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, Council did table this uh, to allow the applicant to come back with some more information. I think as you'll recall, uh, our office gave an analysis on this property and said it's in conformance with the development plan and sort of generally with the secondary plan, but the secondary plan notes of this area does allow for mixed uses, uh, commercial being one of those uses, but really more for small scale uh, types of establishments, uh, you know, retail, professional services, restaurants, that, that sort of thing. And the highway commercial zone does allow for some more intensive uses. I think as you've seen along uh, calculus, where it's maybe more appropriate, some manufacturing, some, uh, some of those things, which may not fall within that sort of, uh, within the, the couch, within that sort of uh, small scale uh, parameters. With that in mind, uh, we did recommend to Council that we think this could be in conformance with the secondary plan uh, if you were to require a development agreement to limit maybe some of those uh, uses, like manufacturing types of uses uh, from this specific property. Uh, I think it was because of uh, that analysis that the applicants uh, want to take a little bit of extra time and uh, figure out more of a business plan, what they wanna do on the property. And they have done that and submitted to council, I believe it was a, a two page document. Um, I believe you've been given copies of that. Uh, just in case we need to put it on the screen, I have the documents in digital format that I can always pop up if any council members need to refer to that. Uh, but I think I'll leave it at that just as a bit of a, a refresher on this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Maybe, Mr. Eno, I'll ask you to put that up on screen just for anybody that maybe has missed that and doesn't have the package in front of them because it is a public hearing. And so anyone attending tonight, if you don't mind putting that up just to scroll down so people can see what council is seeing. Of course. Just give me a brief moment here. I'll just share my screen. So here we go. Can everyone see this? So I'll just do a quick scroll down. The applicant has provided uh, just some information on the property, where it's located, what their plans might be for roads, as well as some ideas about uh, some commercial uses that they might that would they would be possibly pursuing, some concept plans, uh, uh, layouts. These are obviously preliminary concept, and just some graphics there to sort of support what they're talking about. So uh, just a just a brief rundown there for you. Thank you, Mayor. That's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Eno. Any questions for Mr. Eno from Council? Go ahead, Councillor Bassetti, and then Councillor Kleiber. Okay, just for clarification for the planner. Now, we did a first reading, and it was had different concept maps, I guess, with different things listed underneath it, which was the, I guess, advertised 
to the residents that way. So now that this is coming back to us, we have a rezoning summary from the applicant. How does that work with, what are we approving? The first one now, if this, as it's, a, or would we be looking at the updated version of what has been given to us now? What I would say is you're not approving either of those. The application in itself is just to rezone the property to a uh, commercial highway. The information that they provided at the first hearing, as well as for this one, I would say those are just concept drawings of what could possibly be on the property. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but okay. is there no way to, I'm just trying to think of the right words to use here. No way to attach some of this concept to what we're approving? Sure. So if uh, if council wants to hold the applicant to certain parameters, uh, you can uh, require a development agreement. Um, I'd be hesitant to suggest holding them to a specific concept that they might have uh, uh, provided you just because it's a concept that might not have been fleshed out with engineering standards, that sort of thing. But like I was saying before, if there are certain land uses that you do not want to see, or if there are design guidelines you want to put in place, um, you're more than within your rights to require that in a development agreement. Does that answer your question? That answers my question, but I'm just going to put an example out there that, that now I don't know if this takes is getting taken care of in a DA. The existing home that's on there, you know, we're wanna, we want to you want to rezone it to a commercial highway. Let's not leave a residential mixed in the middle of this because it, it could turn around at anything, right? You could have a, a security guy that lives right there. It's it's not what we're looking at doing, and by the look of their pictures, it's not what they're looking at accomplishing too. So stuff like the house being taken down, that kind of stuff, would that be in a DA? Uh, I think you could probably address something like that. Okay, no, that's all I needed was just more for clarification on stuff. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kleiber, go ahead. Yeah, um, just for clarification, the last, the first reading, the um, applicant had stated that they were going to do some kind of manufacturing facility. Am I correct in that? I think they talked about something like that as a possible I idea, that like a uh, a, a showroom, something like that, for a, a, a greenhouse type of a yeah, like the growing uh, off or a greenhouse or whatever. Okay, so if we approve this commercial highway, they could still do that, could they not? Well, once again, through a development agreement, you can limit what they can do. I think what they were, and of course, they can clarify this. I think what they were talking about is that would be more like an an office with a showroom, so to speak, and that would be allowed under the CH zone. Yeah, I, I, I heard a couple of different things during that application. So maybe we could get further clarification of what the real intention is here because I see do two different intentions now and I'm not quite sure where we're going with this um, because now I'm getting completely different drawings and a completely different concept than from what I recall. So um, thank you for that clarification. So what you're saying then is, if we do approve it, then we can in the development agreement say, we don't want a greenhouse there. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. Link, any questions for Mr. Eno? Yes, um, uh, I recall um, some safety concerns with traffic that um, Department of Infrastructure talked about in their feedback and the location of the combined entrance is on a curve. And I think, I think um, the uh, applicants are talking about removing vegetation and so on. I don't know if that's going to solve the trick. I looked in the middle church, uh, uh, church secondary plan 
um, sort of a, I'm not sure if it was the same map as you just showed, um, but anyway, a neighborhood street corridor appears to be planned uh, west side at Masters across the street and running parallel to the railway tracks south to about where uh, the entrance to Lister Rapids Drive is, roughly. And that collector road appears to be meant to have been designed to solve the problem of people having to enter and exit around um, at a curve. Uh, vehicles um, would enter and exit the collector road and avoid turning close to that curve altogether. And um, I think I think that's rather important. Um, and I'm interested, but I'll be asking the applicant, okay, uh, another question related to that. But that is in, it is in the design for the Middle Church plan, that road. Yeah. Yes, it is, ma'am. It's in the, um, I believe it's concept plan number one. There's a land use plan, and then if you recall, there's concept plans for different neighborhoods. Yeah. Yep. And, and yeah, I'm just looking at it now. It's, you can kind of see there, there's a, there's a planned uh, intersection at Masters, just like you talked about. Okay. And when you did the, um, the, the middle church plan, that would have had uh, highways input at that time. Uh, and once again, through a development agreement, you could, uh, you could address these types of items. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Eno? No questions, waiting for the applicant, thanks. Thank you, no questions for me, thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have the applicants available on the line? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Dennis Anthony and Bickley registered in support and with us this evening. Welcome Mr. Anthony and Mr. Lee, welcome back. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> we have a, uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation <clears throat> that I believe I submitted, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, Mr. Eno, um, give me a moment, I have a pen. Mr. Lee, are you wanting us to bring that back up on the screen, the two pages there? No, um, hang on just a second. Um, I have, a, we have a PowerPoint presentation that uh, I'd like to share. I believe I actually submitted it to Mr. Eno if he wanted to uh, use that or I can, uh, I can present it uh, off of mine. Um, I guess I can share my screen, I guess is how I do it, right? Okay. Okay, is my screen being shared now? It says rezoning application of 4008 Main Street. Yep, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, so our application really here is just for rezoning of 4008 Main Street from rural residential to commercial highway. And at our last meeting, the council was interested in hearing a little bit more detail on what we're considering for a redevelopment. Okay. So just to uh, give a reference again, this is uh, an aerial photograph of the existing property with the house on it, uh, an attached garage and a loop driveway. So it currently shares a driveway with the property next door of 4040 Main Street. And the driveway is at the northeast corner of the property just before the bend in the road. Uh, now, the thing about this uh, uh, site is 
If you can kind of see from the aerial photograph, the entrance is actually not on the bend, but it's at the start of where the road does start to curve. And uh, it's the safest place that you can actually sort of uh, uh, access the, uh, the property, given um, we can't access from the west side, south or north. Um, so the property to the north is, uh, is uh, again, 4040 Main Street. It is uh, currently uh, listed as a commercial highway and the properties to the south and across Main are currently uh, rural residential. Um, in the lower left, uh, you can kind of see the, um, this is the Middle Church Secondary Transportation Concept Plan. And I've sort of blown up uh, the area where we have, so you can see how the secondary, the proposed secondary road uh, has been uh, drawn out going from Masters and then the cor uh, following the railway tracks and then uh, coming out at Mr. Rapids. So the green swatch here is showing you where the uh, 4008 Main Street is. And the star, of course, showing you uh, where the current house is. So uh, we see that um, Masters is, a, is an interesting connection because it has a great opportunity to access the Red River. Um, and we see this as a, a great opportunity, uh, not only for accessing you know, the site in a safe manner, but also as a uh, supporting community walking and cycling. Um, now, we also understand that there is no current um, uh, plan, I guess, or uh, any detailed drawings yet for this uh, particular site. So uh, we understand we'd have to wait a little bit for that actually to sort of take place. And we're not too sure of what the details are of how this road is or whether it actually aligns uh, exactly where the blue lines are. Um, when the Crescent Road, and I'm, I'm calling it a Crescent Road, when it's built, uh, it might be that the access will be much better, certainly, uh, as uh, Councillor Link was suggesting, you know, from the west. Uh, in the interim, the only entrance that we have is really, and most appropriate, is uh, from the uh, northeast corner. And um, again, within the this zone, from a traffic perspective, we realize that there is a 125 foot setback off of Main Street. Um, while I think the vegetation sort of becomes a problematic, it does also offer a great visual connection to the traffic. And we can certainly see developing that area uh, to green and beautify, I guess, the frontage. And again, I think the, the appearance of uh, the commercial development along Main Street. And we would be doing all of this, of course, in conjunction, you know, with uh, any of the community partners. So the, the development of the site, uh, we have some considerations uh, that we have to deal with. And one is that um, we are intending and wanting to provide mixed use development uh, with a variety of uh, community based services. And again, that depends on what the market will allow and what people are kind of interested in. Uh, then we see an opportunity, as I was suggesting, that we have accessible active trails for walking and cycling. Um, we're also very interested in partnering with the municipality as well as the community to make sure that we get something that everybody wants and we think we can actually accomplish that with this site. And aside from the setback area, we see the whole site as being an opportunity to green and beautify the community. Those first four considerations are things that are uh, in um, uh, within, I guess, the intention and the development plan for uh, West St. Paul. Uh, some other things that we have to deal with, though, of course, is that the access to the site is limited. And uh, so the existing entrance uh, is something that we have to address. And that's a combination of everything from planning, working with highways and such. Um, and we don't know when the access, I guess, from the west side, you know, would uh, sort of come up. Uh, dealing with the vegetation is something that I think is uh, not only a matter of beautification, but also uh, dealing with sort of highway standards to making sure that, you know, people can see around the bend, and we understand that. Uh, one of the big problems that we have with the site is that the site has very, very poor drainage. And that has uh, as much to do with, I think, the, uh, as we have seen, 
you know, in this past month, you know, with the maintenance of the ditches in the road, which just didn't have the capacity to handle the types of storms we just had. Uh, similarly, our understanding is that the, the drainage is actually uh, along um, the, uh, the railway. And uh, again, uh, we've had issues because uh, it hasn't drained very, very quickly. Um, the railway corridor um, is, I think, a, a number of issues. Aside from drainage uh, and not knowing exactly how the road is being developed there, uh, we do see that there's opportunities really for uh, providing, you know, some active uh, trails and uh, providing, you know, some safety for, uh, uh, for people so that they're not having to cycle along Main Street. So my next slide here is a preliminary concept and uh, you know this is trying to give an idea of how we could uh, access off of um, the proposed Crescent Road uh, on the west side um, and at the same time I wanted to sort of give an idea of, of the type of structure that you know we were thinking of um, and again so in terms of timing you know phasing is uh, one of those things where uh, if the road for the back was being developed uh, soon or when we could, then we could probably phase it so that it would be uh, coming or we could be starting to do it from the backside. Um, we see this as a really good opportunity for uh, developing uh, facilities, you know, to support community services and, uh, and community-based businesses. And there's a few businesses that are uh, have made it uh, very, very clear that, uh, you know, this is a, a perfect spot for, you know, what they want to do. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the, the consideration is following all the guidelines, including, you know, the setback for the roadway. So in a concept like this, um, again, you know, the frontage we see as a real good opportunity for, uh, for beautifying as well as uh, uh, providing, I guess, a bit of a landmark, you know, to the site. So that even if you're not accessing it for, from Main Street, uh, you know, you still see that uh, this is a destination that you may want to go to. Um, so the, what I wanted to do was to say that uh, we understand uh, under the CH development, all our preliminary concepts and, and uh, you know, Councillor Link was asking, you know, wanting to know a little bit more about what we were thinking. Well, all the preliminary concepts that we have been considering are really developing a service center that would attract permitted uses. So nothing that would require conditional use. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about childcare services, which becomes an interesting uh, sort of uh, uh, use of the site. And I think uh, quite compatible uh, health clinics, professional offices, possibly a restaurant, uh, an EDEN type. <clears throat> Uh, perhaps some retail shops, uh, personal services, training and education, contractors office, and possibly manufacturing sales. And again, the idea of uh, a showroom where we're sort of showing uh, individual components of different building systems and such is kind of what we have in mind. But uh, my last note there is that within the conditional see the, uh, the conditional uses are not being considered at all for this property at this point in time. Um, I believe uh, several uh, letters of support have been uh, submitted and uh, received by uh, uh, Red River Planning. And um, the, uh, the two page uh, summary that uh, I guess uh, Mr. Eno had uh, shown um, our supporters uh, and uh, people that we had been talking to in the community were shown that. So it, uh, it became the briefing, you know, for us to start the conversation. And, uh, you know, since that time, you know, some of the, uh, some of the concepts and such have sort of, uh, you know, sort of been integrated and uh, helped us really sort of uh, better understand what the interests are, what the potential is and what would be, I think, uh, really valuable to the community. Um, anyway, and we have full intention and we thought that the community engagement process will certainly be something that we will be uh, very, very much uh, doing as we get into development of the site. But again, I uh, was saying, you know, our application really is just for rezoning. It's not really for developing the site at this point in time. 
but you know we feel very very comfortable about uh, I think the approach that we're taking and uh, uh, going towards a, a CH uh, rezoning. The next slide is really intended just to give you a couple of ideas of how we are thinking about this. Now, uh, the first picture on the left here is okay. We have the railway, and you know this is a really nice way of sort of developing an active trail um, alongside a uh, a railway. Uh, so that you can actually have the biking and such and, and then you know quite often this is designed with the idea that you have a separation of uh, you know from the road. Um, again beautification. Uh, we, we have some concerns with the trees. Um, but the idea of sort of beautifying with something a little bit more ornamental and things that may be a bit lower. Um, and at the same time in the plan that I was showing. We we're kind of showing a, 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 a square or a triangle, and it might be something that we have a as a landmark, you know, to the community to say, "Hey, you've arrived, uh, and this is a place to be." Again, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion and, and comments about, uh, you know, sort of uh, developing the site uh, and uh, bringing in childcare, and certainly with uh, some of the possible changes, you know, that we are finding uh, uh, in general. Uh, you know, it might be a tremendous use that uh, uh, it'd be nice to develop the site you know, with that specific thing in mind so that it's not being shoehorned in. Um, the bottom image here, again, it's just one concept in terms of a, a very, very sort of small scale kind of, um, you know, mall where the, what I really wanted to show with this is, uh, you know, we can understand how this could be more of like a bit of a little town square or something like that. With everything facing, you know, on the inside, um, and then again, the uh, the image on the the right is is trying to suggest, you know, what uh, type of architecture it might be. And again, you know, we're looking at just a, a one story sort of uh, you know building. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's kind of what uh, we were thinking, and as uh, as what was requested is. Uh, you know, counselors were one can know a little bit more about what we were thinking, and uh, I think the images are intended to try and help uh, better understand, uh, you know, what we're thinking in terms of developing this as a commercial uh, uh, commercial property. Anyway, so so thank you very much, and I'll stop. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for your presentation. Very much appreciate the additional information, and we tasked you with providing us with more information and you have definitely done that. So we appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to go around our council table and see if there are questions for you. I will start with Councillor Kleiber. Any questions for the applicants? Um, just wondering, Thomas sort of talked about a completely different concept last time. So what happened to that? Have you abandoned that concept? Is that still part of the plan? We've abandoned that con that concept in the terms of we were confusing council last time and we were listening to the feedback. So this is why we've come up with um, this concept. We've we've refined. So I guess I guess abandoned would be a good uh, word to use, uh, Councillor Keebler. And we were listening to uh, council. We appreciated the opportunity to have some time to get our act together a little better and get out in the community and find out what would work. So I'll assure you there's no greenhouse and we're not manufacturing anything uh, in this uh, plan. We want to stick to uh, professional services. We did some canvassing. We have a potential lawyer might be interested. Uh, there's a uh, physiotherapist uh, and some professional offices. So uh, it's more of a mall environment, something similar to what they have in uh, East St. Paul, just across from the refinery there. And so we're trying to get into the mixed use uh, center of the uh, community and get away from like, we had, we had left some doubt and perhaps we were confused in our own by literally reading the commercial highway and trying to shotgun uh, the whole thing and trying to get more focused on specific ideas that would work and that would be in uh, the vision of the community as a whole. 
Okay. And um, have you decided to remove the house then for the strip mall that you're going to put in? We're totally open to uh, whatever we would need to do. The house could be relocated to some other location, uh, like just repurposed. Uh, and we could certainly address that in the land use. Uh, sorry, not the land use plan, but the development agreement. So we're quite open uh, to uh, doing something with the house other than leaving it there. So um, are you going to maintain just the current access then from, from um, number nine? So you're sharing a driveway. Are you going to be continuing to share that driveway or are you going to have your own entrance in there? Well, from what highways and what the secondary plan, that's why Vic was showing the, I guess it really depends on how fast Masters comes along. We've been talking to Manjeet from highways Plus, with the drainage issue, we had highways in uh, our yard and, and chasing the culverts. Uh, the yard was quite flooded, and a lot of it is because of culverts. Like, if you went to the river crest, you see half a ditch full of water uh, north, and you see us top right up. So, a lot of that's just limited by culvert sizing. And then, as you can see, like on the other side, on the east side, the ditches were working quite well. So. Those could be addressed with some maintenance, and we've started a discussion with highways. And I know there's two parts here. They're they're developing the whole plan, but there might be some short-term uh, options uh, that we're trying to work out because that water could have gone, and it was really an interesting thing during this flood to see how you have half full water near the drain, and then you have all this water backed up uh, to the division point where it goes south and goes north. Uh, at the uh, at the old uh, antique shop, so uh, you know, and we experienced that for two weeks. And uh, like I said, it's it's something that uh, we're certainly open to working with, and we've actually made some strides with the existing agency that, and moving forward in that direction. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Councillor Bracetti. Any questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Anthony, I, one of my questions was the same as Councillor Cliver's about the house. Um, and in, uh, I think a lot of council would like to rather see it removed to kind of make more, I guess, visual access, visual for people on the highway seeing the access. And, and you've got it in your um, summary here about, you know, removing some of the vegetation and cleaning it up so that it is more accessible. Um, you've in your, I guess, presentation or whatever, you talk a lot about this proposed road. Um, a couple things. It, it you look like you it sounded like you thought long and hard about that, and I'm just wondering if you've thought of who's paying for that road. Would it be the RM want having to pay for that road? Uh, the property next to you, Mr. Anthony's property there at 4040 how would we access to go through that kind of stuff then we have property to the north and property to the south so i'm just wondering one of the biggest questions is who do you expect to pay for that road and how would we access or occupy get that land yeah well that that's something that it's really hard for me to answer because of the information the secondary plan and that's why uh, in vic's presentation why he had a phase one and phase two, like, I guess we would want to start with the existing uh, approach that we have, and then we would hope to be able to tie into the secondary. So I don't know if a 3P partnership would be available uh, with municipality and highways, or if that would be something that would have to be borne by the uh, uh, developer, in this case at Four Week. But I guess the question that I have is when they put up, and this is something I'm just asking, when they put that road into the secondary plan, um, when we were reading and stuff, who pays for that exactly? Um, we couldn't answer that. Like we're certainly open to uh, working on a shared costing arrangement. Uh, but I mean, it, it's something that might be out of our control. Like if I was gonna put that, uh, uh, light or whatever that masters um, 
that's something that I can't answer exactly because I, I don't have that information at all. I know we're willing to contribute financially. We have equipment, uh, we do it in kind. I can't give you the exact answer maybe you're looking for because uh, that's why we took the two phase approach. We're trying to work with what we have here and uh, doing what we can with it. No, I wasn't really looking like, I knew, I just didn't know if there was something you'd already thought about or that kind of like there, there's other land in the municipality you ask how it's put there there's other land that shows road right of ways and they're not really there but they are there and it's up to the landowner to give up that land there, there's land through the industrial park that kind of stuff that doesn't really have a road but it is there on a map so, and that would be the landowner that you know puts up that land so how would you, would something need to go in a DA that land is, see, that's where it's hard, right? Because we're, we're pushing so hard on this secondary road that's in a secondary plan. Who's to know when something like that is gonna happen? Well, that's a good question. Like we know within the two properties, we would be willing to contribute to a road of that nature. I can't really answer for people north and south of myself because I, I can't control that. So would that be something that goes in there that there's contributions toward road or, or I, I'm not sure I'm not the one that's writing this stuff, but I just, I just want to put it out there that something, ha you know, a lot of this, the, the plan we saw here was pushing on that road where I'm trying to look at it, you know, accessing Main Street is that that second road could be years in the making. Mr. Anthony, you've been around long enough. You've seen how long it's taken highways just to start upgrading Main Street. So. No, and that's why the two phase approach, uh, you know, get some money uh, flowing from the folk up front. And I mean, the thing, the thing is with the development agreement, I mean, if it was uh, possible, it could all come off that one approach with a common road between the two. I mean, that's something that uh, I think is uh, something that with public hearings and in discussion with Red River Planning and yourselves would bring that out. I, like I said, I can tell you that for the two properties, we would be willing to contribute towards that road. I can't say anything beyond that. Okay, and then one more quick question I had is, so the equipment that's, kind of over on this on this property we're dealing with so that'll be all removed from that property correct the uh, idea is a uh, a mall and that's why as you say with the house the view from the road and trying to track people into a relatively upscale mall the whole and what Vic was talking about with the landscaping and stuff that's got to be comprehensive to the site so that it's consistent in line with uh, if we're going to spend a lot of money on a mall like that, it's gonna be that type of use. So that equipment will be gone. Okay, that's something I have, thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for the applicants? Um, on your original site plan, I see three um, proposed lot lines dividing the property pretty much into one, two, three, four areas. Are you intending, um, is part of your plan possibly also that, that you sell off some of the areas behind this mall area? Now what we've moved to is two distinct areas uh, as shown in the PowerPoint presentation. That's uh, the concept we have as opposed to, we're getting a little bit busy with the four uh, lots or three division points as you were uh, pointing out. Um, so is, your, is it your intention right now that you will be doing the developing on the remaining parts of this property? That's our uh, present plan. Okay. Well, okay, and I have another question for you. 
Um, remember that MI wanted uh, the EU to su supply a preliminary traffic projection uh, for them. Have, I'm glad to hear that it sounds like you're talking to them. Have you supplied that preliminary traffic projections to MI? No, that's something that, okay, but just to answer that, apparently they have the traffic study going when we're talking with, uh, so we were uh, going to be getting that information from them because apparently there is a traffic study being conducted currently. Well, it could well be because um, River Springs Drive has new homes on it. And the, there's going to be many, many, many new homes generating a lot of traffic uh, south of River Springs Drive as well. I'm, I'm, I'm still concerned at this point with that increased traffic. I, I still have uh, concerns about safety issues with the entrance being where it is. I got to be honest. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Preg, any questions for the applicants? I just want to thank Dennis and Vic for going that extra step to give us the concept plans and um, for um, explaining everything. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. I uh, echo those comments from Councillor Preg as well. I appreciate you both uh, bringing this to the table for Council and uh, you clearly heard our concerns. Um, in terms of meeting the secondary plan, um, I'm looking forward to having some of those things addressed. Uh, plans are in place, but then are not able to be executed until there's some build out, whether it's residential or business. And so uh, I think that this development has the potential to address a lot of issues in the area, the drainage there that, uh, that you have next door and, and uh, traffic flowing to lights. And so there's huge potential to address safety and, and issues that are identified in the secondary plan that can't happen unless there are changes brought about to make that happen. The one thing that I'll be interested in seeing for the DA and maybe Mr. Eno, you can bring that concept plan uh, with that proposed road that's in the secondary plan up. Um, as this council knows, um, our secondary plans are um, conceptual, um, like the plans you're presenting to us. Uh, sometimes they're adapted uh, and modified based on what works and what makes sense. And so there's been a number of times where um, it's the general idea. I think, Ms. Reno, you have some really great wording of generally consistent, I think you tell us, uh, with the secondary plan. And I think that the idea of, of flowing that to flowing traffic from uh, safely in the Lister Rapids area, taking it to Masters where a light is going to come, thankfully, because of all of the housing and what's going on there. Uh, I'm just wanting to look at that in terms of options and not um, box us into this interesting road plan in our secondary plan that may not actually be reasonable. I don't know if you're able to bring that up, Mr. Eno. First, I'll just share my screen here with council. I have the... Uh... The image right here. I think this is the plan you're 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 looking at. That's it. That that's it. Okay. Yeah, with the road, so I'm not sure kind of how this came about for this road, um, and and Councillor Dressetti makes a great point as well as you, Mr. Anthony, in terms of who pays for this. How does this happen? How do we not box in to be able to funnel traffic to Masters? So I think if this is approved in terms of a development agreement. Um, I don't know why it's designed in a way that takes up a lot of people's right. land. Um, and so this goes in this L, in this box shape situation here. And MI may help fund something that's a, a parallel service road to highway number nine. Um, so for me personally, I would be looking to see what the DA looks like and that we may have way more likelihood and be way more cost efficient to have a service road run along highway number nine, then come in and start taking huge chunks of people's property and figuring out how we're going to create this road like this. Mr. Eno, I'll turn it to you. Sure, just to that point, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I think as you, you noted, I generally look for things that are, are is it generally consistent with the, uh, with the secondary plan? 
And when we have concepts like this, where there are roads or pathways or something like that, uh, our office typically doesn't look at, is the geometry exactly the same as what's illustrated on the concept plan? In this case, we I think the important point is that there's a concept that shows a connection from, uh, from masters down to Lister Rapids. Now, whether that's through that U-shaped box thing of a road being at the west end or in the middle of those properties, or maybe even a service road along, um, along Main Street. I think that's probably for highways and engineers to, to figure out. I think the, the thing that council needs to keep in mind is, can that connection north to south somehow be achieved? And you can absolutely put that into a development agreement. I appreciate that, Mr. You know, and I ask because once we make decisions and approve things, then it may box us and the options in order to achieve that connection. So if there's ways to more cost effectively achieve that connection that's in the plan um, and make sure that we're not taking too much property out of business owners and, and property owners all along number nine, how do we facilitate that in a fair and reasonable way? That's something that I would be looking for to come out of a DA. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, I don't have any questions. I think uh, what's proposed looks good. I, I guess a, a further question to our planner, just to confirm again, that even though these applicants are asking for commercial highway zoning, they've indicated they want professional uh, services, lawyer, chiropractor in there. And the DA can be really clear, even though they have this commercial overarching zoning, that we can completely limit that to retail and professional and these things that are being discussed tonight. That's absolutely right. And that would be in keeping with implementing the direction found in the, uh, in the secondary plan. As you know, the only commercial zone you have right now is highway commercial. There is no local commercial type of uh, zone yet. Um, so that's the only thing they can apply under, but your development agreement can uh, kind of bring it back into the purpose of, or the spirit of what the secondary plan is talking about. Thank you. And just to confirm, we'd had a situation in the past where uh, it looked like things were going to be subdivided further and come back to council on Main Street with a multifamily and then buildings all popped up and there was no DA. Having a DA condition as a third reading in this means that these folks can't or if they sell anybody else can't do anything on that land in any sense, even though it has the commercial zoning until they have obtained that development agreement from the RM of West St. Paul. Is that correct? Oh, sorry, um, that's correct. Any development of the land would have to follow the parameters of the development agreement that uh, all parties have agreed to. And as always, your development agreements are registered on the title, so it runs with the lands, whether it's these folks who are developing it or maybe they sell it to somebody else, that somebody else has to follow those parameters that the municipality has put out. Thank you, those are all my questions. I'm going to ask Ms. Elias if we have uh, anybody uh, registered in support, uh, opposition, or for information since we have reopened the uh, public hearing. Yes, Madam Mayor, we don't have anyone else registered to, to speak this evening, but we did receive letters of support uh, that were provided to Council earlier. Uh, these were received from Jordan Brown, Michael Byrne, Dennis Hodg Hodgkinson, Scott Miller, Blake Russell, Stephen Deliveris, and Elizabeth uh, Pidlovny. Um, those were the letters of support received. Um, just to, to uh, remind you, there were two letters, or sorry, two people in opposition uh, discussed at the last meeting. That's Michael and Norma Elberg. Ms. Elberg had submitted a letter um, she stated that uh, the timing of the rezoning and development of this property conflicts with the planned improvements slated for this section of highway. Uh, she goes on to note that these safety issues can all be addressed through uh, Manitoba Transportation and Infrastructure's proposed highway, uh, highway number nine improvements. These include widening of the highway, addition of turning lanes, addition of service roads and controlled traffic lights planned for Masters Avenue. No one else is registered in opposition or for information. Great, thank you, Ms. Elias. 
Um, to Mr. Anthony and Mr. Lee, you have an opportunity if there's anything else that you're wanting to add for council. I wanted to ask, we have one of the uh, letter uh, writers uh, in the audience and I guess we didn't understand how the registration works. Uh, do they have an opportunity to speak or not? If they're wanting to speak and they've registered and, and they were listed by Ms. Elias there, they're able to speak. Yep. Okay. So then, sorry, just so we're technically correct, they wrote a letter, but I'm not sure how the registration process works. So I don't want to jeopardize anything by, uh, uh, by misconstruing something. I'm going to refer this to Ms. Elias and just make sure. Ms. Elias, did we have anybody registered? I, we do want to make sure we're following process. We had Elizabeth Tidlovny registered uh, in support, and I'm showing an Alex Tidlovny uh, in attendance. So if, if you like, I, I could bring them in. But it, uh, the uh, the person listed is as uh, as Alex, and we we didn't have registration from that person previously. Mr. Anthony, is that the individual that you're speaking of as well? Yes, Alex is in attendance. If Alex is wanting to speak, he is registered. He is able to speak in support this evening if he's wanting to speak. Hello. Welcome, Alex. Hi. Um, so my name is Alex Kalubny. I'm the son of Betty Kalubny. Um, she is a longtime West St. Paul resident who's lit, resided on that property for 44 years now. And she still resides there for a few more months. Uh, we sold the property to Weary Enterprises uh, for them to go ahead with this project. So we're 100% for the project. We understand there's some hurdles to go through, but uh, it's time for a change for that property, especially like they said with the 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 drainage issues and everything else but uh, my mom's the only reason she sold them this property is for their vision of making west st paul uh you know a better community and she's been there almost her whole life and and she's 100 percent for this property thank you so much for your comments any any questions from council thank you for speaking to council tonight and hopefully we thank can you. keep your mother in west st paul thank you so I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Anthony and Mr. Lee, if there's anything else that you're wanting to add for council. Well, we're looking forward, uh, hopefully to move forward in a very exciting project. And uh, we do appreciate the guidance we got from the last meeting because it has made us really look hard at what we can do and what will work. And we're prepared to move forward on that basis. Uh, Vic, did you want to add anything? And I want to thank you for your time. Um, I don't really have anything uh, to add. I think uh, we've uh, stated everything and I think we've addressed all the concerns uh, that have been raised. And, um, and certainly depending on how the, the secondary road should it, uh, you know, sort of be developed, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity to integrate it and really to make uh, even our site, uh, you know, just that much better. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Any follow-up questions from council? Seeing none, I'll thank you both for being here and, and for going back and revising your plan. We really appreciate uh, you being here tonight and the work that you have put in. Thank you. With that, I'm going to read the resolution to close our public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Link. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. We'll go down to our resolution for our second reading. Be resolved that bylaw BL 2022-4P being a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul to rezone the property located at 4008 Main Street from RR Rural Residential to CH Commercial Highway be read a second time. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Parag, seconded Councillor Busetti. Any discussion on the application? 
hearing and seeing none, I will call for Both the please. question. Oh, sorry, I can't hear you, Councillor Link. Recorded vote, please. Request for recorded vote. Thank you. Hearing and seeing no discussion, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Third reading of bylaw. Be it resolved that by that bylaw BL 2022-4P being a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul to rezone the property located at 4008 Main Street from RR Rural Residential to CH Commercial Highway be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul. And therefore be it resolved that third reading that the third reading of bylaw 2022-4P is given under the condition that the applicant owner enter into a development agreement to ensure compatibility and alignment with key policy direction of the Middle Church secondary plan and subject to council approval. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion on, go ahead, Councillor Brissetti. Just uh, in some of the wording in the, where it says development, development agreement to ensure key compatibility an alignment that's kind of limiting as to what we can add to the da like do we need do we often add that or can we just add into a development agreement mr eno i'm going to refer that to you just in terms of our wording of what we usually say in a development agreement usually i'm reading that big spiel that it includes landscaping and yada yada um, so I understand what, uh, what Councillor Brissetti's point is. So I'm going to defer that to you. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I'd probably defer this to CAO just as to what do you normally do uh, in these practices? I, I know in subdivisions, you usually have a very detailed plan and you list out absolutely everything. In terms of a rezoning, I would suggest you do whatever you have uh, has been your standard process in the past. I know you've done this before. Um, if you want to make a reference to ensure alignment with the secondary plan parameters, I, I think that's fine. If you don't, that's probably fine as well because we know where it's coming from. I yes, we, we want to be as thorough as we can be here. But could we not just leave it open into a development agreement and not Put stipulations on what we can talk about and what we can't talk about. Like, as the mayor has said, we usually list it out with, you know, from buffering to the trees being planted to to everything else. So this is almost limiting us to what we can add onto the development agreement. And this is something we haven't. We don't really do a lot of the rezoning with a development agreement. So. Mm -hmm. Mr. CAO. Well, uh, Madam Mayor, may I suggest uh, I I'm okay with with putting more detail in there in regards to uh, buffering, landscaping as usual. If we want to uh, take a, a five minute break, and and uh, Mr. Eno and uh, Miss Elias could uh, collaborate on what we should have and and lift from uh, lift the uh, the the data from our uh, subdivisions. I'm, I'm good, more than good with that. I'm fine with that. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I think it's important just in the fact that if we rezone this and they create a, an area with no internal roads and there is no subdivision, then we're not able to address the drainage, the landscaping, all those things if they don't come back to us with a subdivision. So if they just do internally what they can do without internal roads, we're not able to address that. So I fully support that. Is council supportive of uh, taking a 10 minute break, letting Mr. Eno work on this and add what we typically do under subdivision conditions? Are we good with a 10? Great. Thanks, Mr. Eno. Sorry, put you on the spot. Thank you. 10 minutes, we'll be back.
Great. Thanks everyone for your patience. Ms. Reno, I'm going to turn it back to you. You've been working on uh, modifying conditions there. So I'll turn it back to you on what you guys have come up with you and Ms. Elias. Actually, I think Ms. Elias is going to read it out for you. She's got it all written down. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Elias, are you good to go there? Hey, Madam, <clears throat> Madam Mayor, let's pull it up here. Uh, so uh, what we prepared um, is that be it resolved that bylaw 2022-04P uh, being a bylaw of the rural, rural municipality of West St. Paul to rezone the property located at 4008 Main Street from rural residential to commercial highway be read a third and final time signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the rural municipality of West St. Paul. And for further be it resolved that third reading of bylaw 2022-04P is given under the condition that the applicant owner enter into a development agreement uh, to address items including but not limited to design and landscape standards, access, internal traffic flow, buffering, use limitations, <clears throat> removal or relocation of existing house, drainage, and dedication of land for future roadways. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Uh, you and Mr. Reno didn't want to leave in, in addition, about key policy directions of the military secondary plan as well, or this is going to cover it? I, I think those items, because they're a little more detailed, cover the, um, uh, the direction in the secondary plan. I'll agree, I'll agree with uh, the planner and, uh, and uh, Ms. Elias and Mr. Reno. I think the more detail we have there leaves that out. Thank you. So now I would ask if the mover and the seconder are okay with the changes made to the resolution. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion from council uh, regarding this? Okay. I would just say I have a couple of comments in terms of the uh, ability here to improve the area, to bring some retail and make sure that we address uh, things because we'll have this ability in a development agreement to funnel traffic to lights. So I see this as an ability to, uh, for the municipality to address a lot of things and ensure compliance with our uh, secondary plan. And had the applicants not brought this forward, we won't have that ability to, uh, to make sure this is a lovely retail area. So I think there's real huge potential here to work with these applicants through a DA that'll come back to council and address a lot of issues here. Those are my comments. I'll request a recorded vote. It is on a third reading anyway and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Eno, for joining us this evening. Another long, busy evening in West St. Paul, so thank you very much. My pleasure, Council. Have a good evening. All right, we are down to item seven, confirmation of the minutes, 7.1, special meeting of April 25th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on April 25th, 2020 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Move by Councillor Rossetti, second in Councillor Prague. Any discussion on the April 25th meeting? We call this vote, please. Sorry, I have to ask you to repeat, Councillor Link. I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Recorded vote, please. Thank you. No further discussion. I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? I'll be abstaining. Resolutions 2022-148 and 2022-151 are factually inaccurate. I am abstaining from the vote to accept the minutes of April 25th because of these factual inaccuracies. Thank you. Thank you. 
7.2 regular meeting of April 28th be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on April 28th 2022 be approved can I have a mover please moved by Councillor Link seconded Councillor Prague any concerns questions regarding these minutes I would just remind Council that if you have concerns with the minutes it's good to raise those two prior to a vote and be able to discuss those okay. seeing none I will call for the vote all those in favor opposed and that is carried 7.3 special meeting of may 4th be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting held on be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on may 4th 2022 be approved can i have a mover please moved by councilor busetti seconded by Councilor craig any concerns regarding these minutes sorry councilor link i can't hear you because when i'm talking then my speaker's not on go ahead all right, I'm requesting a recorded vote. And you, I think you just asked if I had any concerns. Am I right? You asked about concerns? I asked council, Councillor Link, not you specifically. I asked all of council if they have concerns with right. the minutes, then they should raise I, those concerns. Yeah. I do. Yeah, this is the part where we discuss. Yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Link, and then Councillor Cliver. Um, this meeting was not live streamed on May the 4th. The YouTube recording was posted the Friday following the meeting. Since it wasn't a public meeting, I, I cannot be voting for uh, to accept these minutes. Thank you, Councillor Link. I guess as a follow-up question, um, I'm unfamiliar with this and did not know that this was not a public meeting. So I'm wondering why you did not bring this to council's attention or administration's attention to address any issues or technical problems prior to tonight's meeting. If you knew this was not a meeting that was live recorded YouTube, I'm wondering why you waited and you're bringing it up now instead of trying to address the problem, well, make I sure assume, that our residents have access to our meetings. I assume you knew because nothing was posted until Friday. So I'm assuming that you would have some sort of an explanation tonight to, to help us to understand how it was recorded, but it was not streamed. I assumed there would be some explanation tonight. Well, Councillor Link, I'm rather concerned because if what we're all here for is making sure that we're following proper process and wanting our residents to see the meetings, if we had a concern and it was not live streamed as it should be, then why wait till tonight where this meeting may not be live streamed as well if there was a technical problem to be addressed? If you knew about this on Friday, why would you not bring this to administration's attention to address with our uh, individual that is recording our production company here? that has been recording it, why would you wait and risk this meeting not being live on YouTube for our residents, given the significance and importance of this? Like I said, I assumed you knew about it and that you would make a uh, provision that it would not happen again. So I was assuming you would take action. I guess I made a mistake. How would I know about this, Councillor Lincoln? There's a lot of assumptions there. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Um, the minutes don't show a break. And I called into the meeting. And I believe we had a break for 10 minutes. And, um, and also, I, I, so I came on at uh, four o'clock, we talked for three minutes. And then there was the issue with the uh, the agenda and accepting the agenda and we took a 10 minute break which is not shown here and then we came back and there was a motion on the floor which is not shown here and i i went back to the um recorded meeting and i definitely clearly stated that i seconded the motion uh, that's not here um the other thing that's on here that i it looks it doesn't look very nice. It says Councillor Kleiber left the meeting and it and that's under 3.1 and it looks like I left in the meet middle of Ken Azaransky's meeting. Well, I checked my phone to see exactly when I hung up 
and I hung up at 4.51, and the meeting ended 4.52. So I would like the MLO to add that I left the meeting at 4.51, because the way that it looks right now, uh, I left in the middle of a presentation, which is not the truth, and it misrepresents when I left. Mr. CAO, either through you or through the MLO regarding the accuracy of the minutes and what our process has typically been? Well, I'm going to uh, let the MLO talk to it. We have two people watching the minutes. Uh, I mean, if the uh, the councillor thinks the minutes are inaccurate, I guess that the, the councillor can uh, vote against it. I'll uh, let the MLO give uh, her version of what she knows. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my quick review of the meeting notes uh, does, I do record that we took a, 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 a pause um, from uh, the call to order resolution. We had a mover and seconder resolution was on the floor. Uh, we took some minutes to um, uh, look into some comments that were being made. Uh, no, I didn't record that uh, in the minutes. That would be similar to the last resolution um, for planning that you just passed tonight, where we took a break to uh, amend some wording in a resolution, that that small break while a resolution is on the floor is not recorded in the minutes. Um, so uh, something to note when those minutes come forward, you won't see that notation. Um, I did not note uh, what time Councillor Kleiber left. Uh, it was noted that Councillor Kleiber wasn't present at the time of the resolution to adjourn. So while I appreciate um, Councillor Cliver's phone records, uh, she did not announce that she was leaving the meeting. So I only have uh, my notation to go by. Um, and I, I believe that addresses the, those two, two issues. And uh, happy to amend in minutes as as council sees fit, but those accurately re represent what I took. Thank you, Ms. Shosh. Mr. CAO? I've contacted our, our technical people with the video and uh, uh, as far as they can see uh, that that was streamed. So I don't, was somebody watching that uh, couldn't connect into the streaming or does someone uh, come in after the meeting was finished? I'm not sure. I. I guess we'll have to, uh, uh, Councillor Link, if you could provide us with more data after this meeting's uh, done, you can send us an email and we can look further into it. But the video tech technical people say that the video was streamed. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Any follow-up regarding that? I would just like it noted that I left the meeting at 4.51. I'm not sure who moved or seconded the minutes. Ms. Shaw, if you could let me know who was the mover and seconder on these minutes, if they're okay with amending that. Recorded. Yeah, I'm here. And I have a recorded vote as well. Thank Sorry, you. I can't hear. Uh, well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the mover was Councillor Busetti, seconded Councillor Perag, and I do have a recorded vote request uh, uh, noted for this. Thank you. So, Councillor Bersetti and Prague, are you wanting to alter the minutes that Ms. Shaw has written up? No, it's good the way it is. It says that the council approved the updates on the overland flooding, and then Councillor Fiber left, so it doesn't have to show a time. It was after the presentation from Mr. Azaransky. Thank you. So, so far, <clears throat> then we have a mover and a seconder on the minutes as presented. I think it's something to consider if we abruptly move, leave a meeting that it's recorded in there and we're being consistent in how that's recorded. Um, I, in terms of live streaming, uh, I would just encourage council members uh, not to wait until we're done the next meeting that if there are concerns and that you're hearing that. Um, I've received no messages that any of the live stream meetings were not live streamed correctly. 
many of our staff watch the meetings and people in the public and I haven't received a single comment. Um, but I don't think it's very fair to our staff or the production team to hit them at the end of the next meeting in case there were technical difficulties that haven't been addressed. That doesn't seem very nice or fair or a way to uh, make sure that residents are actually accommodated and that our meetings are public. Mr. CEO, go ahead. Yeah, I would echo the same comments. If, 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 uh, if Councillor Link felt we had a problem, it would be uh, uh, consideration to make sure that we're a continuing entity that serves our population that, that that she wouldn't wait till the end of this meeting and chance that people wouldn't have uh, the opportunity to to view the meeting. I find that rather odd. We've had discussion on the minutes. I have a mover and a seconder, a request for a recorded vote. And I will call for the question. All those in favor of approving the minutes? All those opposed? And that is carried. We are down to item 10.1, the accounts payment register details as of May 5th. Mayor so that's Christian. on there for Mayor us Christian. to review. Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. I sent you a text that I'm not feeling well, and I'm going to leave the meeting now at 9.39. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well at all. Thank you for letting us know. Um, our accounts are listed. Item number 11 is our payroll monthly statements. Be it resolved that the payroll for the month of April as follows be approved as presented. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Link. Any comments, discussion regarding monthly payroll? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. Item number 13 is our CAO report. I'll read the resolution, and then if there are any questions for discussion. Be it resolved that the Council of the Roman Municipality of West St. Paul accept the CAO report as information. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Brusetti. Any uh, comments, concerns regarding the CAO's report? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Just wondering about the Animal Control Officer's report. It hasn't been on for the last, I think, or maybe I somehow missed it. Um, has there been an animal control report lately? Mr. CAO, I'll refer that to you. Uh, we'll get MLO. I, I've seen one. I, I, uh, I, I've seen one lately. I, the MLO can comment on, on uh, this month. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. For the month of April, there was no submitted report, uh, no calls reported. That's good news. Any other questions regarding the CAO April report? And we have the council April reports as attached. Any concerns, comments regarding the April council reports? Go ahead, Councillor Link. This is probably just a, a, an oversight. Um, I'm looking at Councillor uh, Parag's report and he reports being at the AMM convention on April 18th, but there wasn't AMM started the morning of the 19th. I know he came early, but there was no conference to attend. Um, I don't know. There was the meeting started at eight, my meeting started at nine in the morning and I'm not Link leave here home early in the morning to get there. My room was booked for the night before. Right. That's why we have travel allowance in our indemnity. Uh, if you, you have to leave early or the night before because it starts early, then then I believe, I'm, I'm not sure, but it could be easily checked that you claim travel allowance, um, not the conference rate. I don't know. Someone can check that, MLO or? Yes. Any 
Any other Any questions, questions regarding the reports from council? I would just like to take the opportunity to uh, thank Councillor Prague and thank Councillor Link for waking up at the crack of dawn for AMM Women's um, Panel. It was a pleasure to sit up and speak with the Premier of Manitoba on uh, trying to encourage more women to run in politics. It was an honour to be asked.